welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting on November 18th, 2020 at 6 o'clock in the main meeting room of the Municipal Offices at Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Meetings normally held at the Municipal Offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where we require public participation provided in provided in accordance with Governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically, typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT, remote meeting connection is noted below. The dial-in number is 929-205-6099. Or 301 715 8592 or 833 548 0276. The webinar ID is 945 6386 5681 and the passport code is 457237. Meeting attendees all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Thank you very much, and we'll open the public hearing. We're having, uh, I mean, a public information night. We're having a public information night to discuss the proposed recreational development of a lot located on North Main Street um, that will be held tonight, November 18, 2020, from 6 o'clock this evening till 7, during our regularly scheduled bi-weekly select board meeting. The public is invited and welcome to attend. Meetings normally held at the municipal hospitals are held remotely, and it's the same information that we've already read. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn this over to um, John just to give a little bit of background and to go over um, sort of the timeline uh, to how we got here. And then we're going to talk about, um, we had some preliminary thoughts on what we were um, interested in putting in that um, area. And we would like to collect more information and see what people are interested in. Mm -hmm. And also address uh, uh, and note any concerns from abutters um, in this process. Okay, so John, go ahead. Thank you so much. I'm hoping everybody can see me. Good evening. It's John Peshore, Jr. Most of you know me uh, in town. Uh, when I came back as Chief of Police back in 2012, I initially was asked to meet with the Highway Superintendent, who was Sean Patterson at the time, and uh, Sue Antonellis, and our Fire Chief for South Deerfield Fire District. And we had a meeting over on Braeburn Avenue, like I said, back in 2012 or 2013. And the goal was to see if somehow we could work within the roadway for vehicles to travel in through a right-of-way to an access and field space off of North Main Street and Braeburn Road. And when we went over there, it, the road was just too narrow to handle any capacity for two cars going by, for an emergency vehicle, or anything else. So it started to trigger from the Recreation Department in Sue Antonellis that we did not have enough field space within the town of Deerfield. As time progressed throughout the years, the Open Space Recreational Committee met in 2014, and they've identified uh, areas to improve the town, areas that they wanted to conserve the town. And one of the things identified was to improve recreational facilities in South Deerfield. Uh, it was to create new facilities and maintain existing ones. It was also for the police department to work uh, increasing the level of policing within the facilities. So naturally looking for the community to better it, I started to get curious myself. And throughout the years, I've been in touch with the chair of the Recreation Commi Commission, Rod Ackerman, who's on my left, most likely on the right of your screen, the select board, and the Recreation Commission as a whole. Back in 2018 and 2019, we started reviewing possible access points on North Main Street to get into that Brayburn property. And I met and communicated with three or four residents that were up there that owned houses about parceling off a piece of property where we could get in there either for senior housing and or recreational activities. And yet no area has been able to be identified to date to get into that property. 
And unfortunately, as we progress forward in the future, the town may actually have to purchase a house up there when somebody does list it for sale and parcel off a piece of property and hopefully be able to resell the house at a slightly lower value after they parcel off an access point. But right now, that property is of no value to us because we have no access to it. At that point, we started searching for other areas around and I actually started to work with Mark Vallone from Atlantic Furniture over at the Industrial Drive. And Mark was amazing. He has a piece of property on the back side of Atlantic Furniture that he actually was interested in letting us use for athletic fields. However, then he also identified that he may be looking at expansion in the future. So we came back to pretty much ground zero once we found out that there is a possibility for an expansion. We didn't want to invest in fields and a recreation area if in fact in two to five years his company grows and he decides to put out an expansion and he owns the property and we don't. So it sent me right back to the drawing board again and talking to the select board and the recreation commission behind the scenes to go, where can we identify in the town to create an environment for the community as a whole? Where, where can we create more recreational space? Every time there's a recreational event behind town hall, there's no parking. We come in with a domestic arrest, somebody's kicking and screaming in the cruiser, and there's kids out back coming and going from a baseball game. It is not a good environment. So as I was looking at South Deerfield, the property on North Main Street for sale had been up there for a few years. It was for sale for a while. And we started to look at it and really explore our opportunity and options for the parcel. And when we did, it readily became apparent to us that it was in close proximity to the center, it was on water and sewer, there's sidewalks out front, and it's in close proximity to the elementary school and high school. So overall, it's a great environment for the town as a whole. And that's not kids, that's everybody. So it's amazing. I always go back to when I spoke to annual town meeting, when I spoke to the recreation commission, when I spoke to special town meeting, the town has not had a town park since the 1990s. We had a town park. It was called Dwyer's Lot. It's where the elementary school is. So the goal is to create a town park where we can bring the community together with more than 13 parking spaces in the front of town hall. We really want to create a town environment where people can get together. So we started to really go down the path with the North Main Street parcel. And we explored some possibilities with an engineering firm in advance of annual town meeting. We came up with a few concept plans and ultimately met with the planning board, the finance committee, the capital improvement planning committee, the community preservation committee, and the select board all of which approved the project. The initial budget from a local contracting company was identified at approximately 1.15 million. Since the annual town meeting, back in June, we've engaged a professional engineering firm. We purchased the property, which is currently known as 135 North Main Street. It's 8.5 acres. We filed with the Conservation Commission to delineate the wetlands. The Conservation Commission met and they accepted the wetland delineation after uh, going back and forth with the the engineer, the wetland engineer. And speaking to the nonprofits, Eagle Brook has committed to install a pavilion. They've always been a tremendous partner of the town. We are currently in conversation with Deerfield Academy to see if they would contribute to it. And our newest partner of town, the brewing company, Treehouse, has offered to assist with the park as well. So the engineering firm, one of my first requests was they give me a detailed breakdown budget. And when they did, I think the numbers gave a few of us sticker shock, but it's also reality. The cost of building today is very high. So the project came in well over what my local contractor estimated it as the 1.15 million. It came in closer right at 2.15.
And that's when we came back to fall special town meeting and the additional $1 million was approved. So at this point, we have the workable budget. We have town meeting approval from annual town meeting, special town meeting. The wetlands have been delineated. And to proceed forward to the next step, we really want to look at uses of the park, what the residents truly would like to see there, and any concerns we would like to mitigate as well. So the uses of the park I have identified as public gatherings and celebrations, educational tied to climate resiliency at Frontier Regional School District, summer recreational concerts, I know there's some concern about the noise. I, I think most people know that the summer concerts are usually from 5 to 8 p.m. in the evening. There's usually six of them. So they're not constantly throughout the year. They're not late in the evening. There's a focus with the current design for all ages of maintaining physical and mental health. It's handicap accessible with a walking path around the exterior. I know uh, Sue from the Recreation Commission uh, our full-time director really would like to see workout stations like they do in some of the communities across uh, the United States along the path, which I think would be amazing. There's athletic fields on there. I understand there's a concentration on soccer because we don't have any soccer fields in town. We do have softball, we have baseball, uh, but the fields themselves are actually multi-purpose fields. So they can be used for other events. We really need to put some storage on site for Sue. Sue is operating out of a tiny, tiny storage behind Town Hall in an old metal building that is mice infested and it's not adequate for her. So we really need some good storage to enhance our recreational activities for not only the youth, but for everybody. And with this, we want to look at the future beyond this meeting. Next up, the concept plan would be refined into detailed engineering pl plans, detailed survey, soil testing, and engineering design will continue. Town Council's reviewing and will provide recommendations on the permitting process through the different town boards. Due to the wetlands on site, the project will be need, need to be permitted through a notice of intent with the Conservation Commission. As a part of this process, abutters will receive notification of the hearings and will be invited to participate in the public meetings. A professional wetland scientist has been retained for this work. Once the engineering, permitting process, and bid documents are complete, the project would then go out to bid. So that's where we are today. Uh, where we came from in the past, and the focus of tonight's meeting is really to figure out from the residents what you like, what you would like to see there on behalf of the town, and then to mitigate any of the concerns from the residents and the abutters. And I would turn it back to the chair, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, John. Um, I think we'll open it up for public comment so that um, we can start writing down what people would want. Um, I know we've talked in the past of walkability, sociability, connecting um, the Leary lot and Berkshire Brew and going all the way up and that was part of John's listing. Treehouse's help is to connect all the way up and generate some interest um, for all generations, including the seniors, and connect with the senior center and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So I would um, I'd maybe speak a little bit first too, sure. before yeah. we open it to public comment. Um, I just want to just say I'm really excited about where we're at. You know, the opportunity that we have for a town, for our town, um, as John has stated, and when we stated at, at our uh, annual town meetings and special town meeting when the town endorsed um, funding the project, uh, that, that we do have a need for um, for a park and um, um, re especially after the last year um, knowing the stress that our community has gone through um, every community's uh, community has gone through but just not having a place to congregate um, and I think once praying that we have a vaccine and once we can come together again as a community um, I have longed for 
ever since I became selectman to, to try and build that social fabric um, so that we can get our families together, places to have parties, um, places to have events to bring people together and enjoy each other's company. Um, you know, we get together, but it's in meetings and it's this, we, we need some fun. And we need to, uh, and, you know, life is about getting together and enjoying each other's company um, and celebrating good things with people. I just think to have a place to do that, I think of, you know, again, out back we have a spot, there's usually a ball game going on or a soccer game going on. Um, but you're right, you have, you have the traffic coming through the parking lot, you have the police going in and out, and you don't know what's, what the police are bringing for, for an issue at the time. Um, our town common, while we're looking at improving that for walkability and ADA accessibility, it's not really a place to gather. I mean, we do, we do have our, you know, our Memorial Day service there, um, but it, it, even that is not big enough for, you know, people are spilling out onto the roads, we have to shut down Park Street. It's really not a space that lends itself to gatherings. So while we do have, you know, we're making do with what we have, but summer concerts, people are packed in there. Kids are running around. They need to be off the main road, separate where they can run out in the field, have plenty of space. No one's going to get hurt. There's no traffic going by. So I'm excited about that opportunity for our town. I'm also excited about having a, field, a soccer field. We do, as John said, we, uh, Chief said, we do have fields for uh, several other sports, but we lack immensely a soccer field because our kids, um, even at Frontier or any other time, our rec, rec department, we're going over to Sunderland, we're going down to Waitley. You know, our kids, uh, even, even uh, soccer at school, the, the kids will get on the bus after school, they'll get dropped off at, at Hurley Heat. No one's coming back for them. The bus does not come back. The parents have to go and get them. And if they're working till six o'clock, kids are waiting there or they're trying to find a ride. You know, here, they'll be able to either go back to school, go back to the library, you know, they'll be, uh, they can do homework, that kind of thing, or they can ride their bike home. You know, if you're on Hillside or if you're on North Main, you know, it's a lot better than being left in another town on the other side of the river or down, down, you know, miles away from town for our children to come, you know, after school, after their sports, before their parents come home. So I think that's really important. I love the idea of a walking park around that so our seniors have a place to walk. I've always envisioned one, maybe tie it in some year around the town, downtown and the school. Um, but I think this would be a great place to start that process. It's a nice place to go park your car and three or four of you walk in the, in the evening or in the morning. Um, great exercise to be outside. It's a beautiful place to be. Um, I, you know, again, I'm concerned. We're not looking to have big bashes there or large concerts all through the night. There's not going to be any of that. But, you know, everybody has enjoyed our, our concerts that Sue's put on, you know, on the town common. This will be separate from town. You won't have to be right in the center of town. Um, it's a safe place. Hopefully we'll have a nice band shell to do that. Um, with the help of other communities and donors. So I, I'm really excited about this project and it's taken a lot of work from John and everybody else to kind of try and lay out a vision. It's not set in stone. That's why we're here tonight to go, okay, this is what we'd like to see. This is what we've heard from residents that they would like to have. Now let's put it on paper and say, did we miss anything? Is there anything else people would like to see? What else could we fit there? We wish we had more land to do a bigger part that's not possible so we so we're going to fit what we can reasonably on this on this parcel so i'm really excited to move forward with it David, would you like to say anything yeah um you know i concur with trevor on all the facts that said and the exciting thing for me is that all this is coming together at the same time that uh, the town's going to be celebrating its 350th and it's going to be an ideal venue for that um and with the new brewery coming to town uh, that site there, I mean, um, things are really coming together for this town to be able to celebrate in style. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and all this should be done at that time, and it's, it's really exciting. It's coming together, and, um, you know, I want to commend John on the hard work that he's done on this. Um, it's uh, taking an immense amount of time to do it. Thank you for it. I know, I know it isn't a huge amount of work, John, but I think, again, we all appreciate it, but I think, as everyone said, we're, the pandemic makes us really ready for a party. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how wonderful we'll be celebrating the 1350th. So 
it's, it's, that, it's the timing is perfect. So even though it's been a lot of work, and um, is there anything you'd like to say, Rob? Yeah. Um, Rob Ackerman, uh, Chairman of the uh, Recreation Committee. Uh, our committee unanimous, unanimously uh, supports this project. I'm very excited personally about this. This has been something that's been on my bucket list since I've been on the rec committee for about 15 years. Um, I think Trevor hit the nail on the head. It's about bringing community together. It's just not a soccer field. We can get back to maybe have an old home day celebration and things like that. You know, um, people can use the field for like exercise and yoga and stuff like that. I see people all the way down in Sugarloaf, which is a field we don't even own. The state owns it. We have an agreement to maintain it. So um, I want to keep it short, but I just want to say that personally I'm excited and our committee um, really supports this project. I want to thank John for uh, spearheading it. Thank you. So, um, Jennifer, why don't, is there, uh, I don't know what the, uh, how you want to do it, but we would like to have public comment now. Sure. So, um, first I'm going to speak on behalf of somebody that's asked me to, mm -hmm. and she has a couple of questions she wants to um, ask about. Um, I'd like to address the current plan, specifically the parking plan. And then um, she also says that, um, well, she, um, she endorses the park, but she strongly, she objects strongly to having a parking lot adjacent to any of Butters property. And she also says that looking out my front door at a plastic manufacturer, I see an apple orchard, someone who looks like the park, uh, should not look at a parking lot. And she also, one last thing, one comment is, um, oh, that's somebody different. She does support the project, she just wants me to say that. Um, but the design needs some um, input, so. Okay, we're, we okay. wrote it down. You wanna address mm -hmm. that first? No, nope, we're just no, gonna hear we're, it. We're just, we're just taking notes. Okay. Any others, Jen, that we can't see? Yes. So um, what's going to happen to the wetlands? What constitutes a major factor in increase? The increase was partly due to the, the groundwater level, and it was secondary uh, as part that we weren't able to negotiate or purchase the property in between. So therefore, we had to dramatically increase the parking lot. And the third part of it came from a local contractor and not an engineering firm. So unfortunately, those numbers were a lot lower than reality was. So it's threefold. Okay. Um, so now I'm happy to have people who have their hands up. So I'll start promoting them and they can ask their questions themselves. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Lori. Welcome, Lori. Hi. Um, so let me just start by saying that I think the idea of town park is great. Oh, start my video. Okay. <laughs> really neat. There you are, Lori. Sorry, um, I'm just saying where I live, but <laughs> 192 North Main Street. Um, I. I, I do miss the old home days, um, and I love the idea of a, of a park and um, having a concert where traffic is driving all constantly in the center of town is not ideal. I have um, strong concerns about the wetlands. If you look just at the map, it says um, vegetated wetlands, but these are not cattails. Those are, you know, 40 to 50 year old trees that take up an extensive amount, I'm not going to name, put a number, but I think I heard 150 gallons of water a day. So once those trees are cut, that is going to have a lot more water there. And thinking about the big picture, um, the town has been working on uh, the Municipal Vulnerability Plan. I'll just say MVP. Um, and I just uh, we, you know, we're looking at Bloody Brook up here, and we're looking at um, Bloody Brook over there, until I heard her drive is getting a new culvert. How does this, I just, I don't feel comfortable with how the wetlands issue falls in place. And 
by my unprofessional um, overview, uh, quick look, it doesn't look like the compensated area is nearly enough to take the place of 40 year old trees. So that's just, that's my biggest concern. I also wonder if we really need that many spaces for buses. Um, and I also would like, I, I heard vaguely the idea of having there be um, a place where there might be some nature study for the high school. So how do we really retain the nature as part of it? Um, actually, and, and one more comment. In line with the MVP, I, I feel like any project going for, forward should use those same kind of guidelines with permeable pulp, um, parking, perme um, permeable pavement. Um, and I also want to advocate for composting toilets. There's no need to bring water over there, my opinion. We have to think of the 21st century here because it's coming on. <laughs> Yeah, so a few things for you quick, Lori. A lot of trees as part of the plan, remember this is a concept plan only, the stormwater management plan has not been done yet. Trees on the way in on the entrance would have to be removed. However, the vast majority of the property is undisturbed with trees. If you look at the concept plan, there's not a lot of trees that are taken down there. The bus parking area is approximately nine or ten standard vehicle sizes. That is not for nine or ten buses. That one. No, I'm, I'm talking about John. I'm talking about the trees that are right down the middle of the soccer field. It's I don't know the length, but it's quite a long um, row of forty to fifty year old trees that are small because they're so crowded because they're wetland trees. I imagine most of them are red maple. So I'm, I'm talking about the ones in the middle of the soccer field itself. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I think that we are going to have to deal with the, the stormwater runoff, and that's going to have to be mitigated through, at minimum, the Conservation Commission, and uh, that's going to have to be dealt with through the engineering process. And if Conservation Commission is not okay with it, then we're back to the drawing board. That absolutely has to be dealt with. I share your concern. Okay, my understanding was she said that that already had taken place. So. No, the stormwater management plan has not taken place. Just the wetland. Delineation. The wetland delineation has taken place, not the okay. stormwater management plan. So, so just to, um, um, a push to really you know, overly compensate for the amount of trees that. Yep. Will be removed. I, I, I gotta tell you honestly, it kills me to take down any trees, any trees. <laughs> so it really has to be a great reason. And unfortunately, those trees are right smack in the middle of the wheel, where the field will go. Yep. Lori, one of the places to get Oh, Lori, we're working with Frontier uh, for the Harvard Forestry Project and um, the National Association of Conservation Districts, both their pollinator program that's online and their soil health um, curriculum that is online. And we intend to um, work with Frontier um, students to have projects that will be part of the de park development, but also ongoing um, you know, monitoring and all that kind of stuff um, as part of their school. So um, we're pretty excited about that. That sounds great. Yep. And, and we, um, um, you Fields also usually um, require a lot of pesticide use near our wetlands, so that's another concern. Well, I, I think we're going to try to be um, as green as possible, not only because um, you know it is the thing to do, but also um, a lot of kids are going to be um, accessing this field um, and, and the park in general, and I think most of us feel that we don't want any pesticides whatsoever. So. We'll be working on that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Thanks, Lori. Lori. You're muted. You're muted, Jen. Who's next up? Sorry, sorry. I'm going to put you back, Lori. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> Let's see. Uh. All right, so I um, have a question from before.
for? Who is the local contractor? For the initial numbers, it was Cocot Construction. We have to say that one more time. Cocot Construction from Waitley Road. Okay. We and have we um, have we have their original quote. If somebody wants to put it up. Okay. So I have a question. Um, John, he says he doesn't have a microphone, so bear with me. We need an overall town plan that incorporates recreation, senior housing, a senior center, et cetera. Maybe, just maybe, the land for this recreation project could be used for a senior center or senior housing. Maybe we should come up with a plan before spending all this money on recreation. I'm not against recreation, but I am <clears throat> about putting together something without an overall plan. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then there was um, an additional comment. I believe it must be the same John, or maybe it'll be another John, but he says, hi, John Bresky here without a microphone. Um, the town approves the appropriation of $2 million. What is the plan with respect to the grant? Will the money be used for the project? or put back in the CPA funds. Um, if it is to be used for the project, it will need to um, be approved by the CITC as they did not approve it during the, their recent meeting. Okay. CITC did approve it. I'm not sure what he's referencing. Yep, yeah. yeah, uh, the state uh, told us with respect to the grant that we were not awarded under this round However, they recommended okay. that we apply for the land conservation grant. Is that what it was called, Carolyn? Yeah. Which is up to a $1 million award, and applications are due for that in April. Okay, thank you. All right, so I have, um, I'm going to promote uh, Jennifer Remillard. Welcome, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Carolyn. Sorry, trying to get everything started here. <laughs> okay, um, can you see me all right? Yes, we yes. can. Yes. Okay, um, I just wanted to say I strongly support the idea of having um, this recreational area built. Um, as you know, I'm a member of the 350th uh, steering committee and you know, one of the things I've taken note in the community is that there's not a lot of open space for any gatherings to occur. While the town common is utilized for a lot of various things, um, it's very small. And, you know, people suggest the parking lot behind, um, you know, the police or around the police department and senior center and other things. Um, but it's really not a large space to hold anything. And the other, you know, and, and even regardless of that, um, one of the things that I've enjoyed, um, you know, I take a five, 10 minute ride over to Sunderland to their Riverside Park or Riverwalk Park that they um, created behind their town community in the library there. And I live in, you know, I live close to downtown in South Deerfield um, on Conway Street. And I have to say, I would really love to have a location um, that you know, whether I drove or walk, and I can walk, um, you know, to to where this new location is, um, to have something that's you know a great location to walk. Um, there's not a lot of sidewalks down the side or Conway Street where I am that leads to downtown, you know, through five, and it's a safe environment in my opinion. It's a great community location. I can take my dog. Um, while my son is in his 20s, you know, if he was younger, I feel that it would be a great location for, you know, for, for kids to be at. And there's not a lot of, um, you know, open land to be purchased within the community. Most of it is agricultural based, and it seems, you know, if a lot of the private schools up at the other end of Deerfield, um, you know, have purchased most of the open land or utilize it, you know, for part of their um, campuses. So, People, you know, it's a special town meeting, and I've seen, you know, on the Deerfield Now Facebook page, a lot of commentary about, oh, we'll find another location. Um, 
you know, I've lived in this community and purchased this house in 2014, and there are not a lot of other available spaces. So I really want to thank, um, you know, uh, Chief Sachari for taking on this task with the community because I think it's something that's really lacking here. Um, you know, I'm originally from Springfield, and I lived the past, you know, before moving to Deerfield, I was in Northampton. And I've heard the, you know, the commentary about finding soccer fields and finding other locations. And Northampton really had a large problem with that before. And, you know, I've seen it progress. And to, to hear that, you know, the community um, or the town select board is taking on the fact of making sure it's environmentally safe for children as well as the weapons and as well as the users, um, you know, it's really important. And I share a similar concern to Lori, um, who just spoke about um, permeable pavement, because I think, you know, water runoff is a large concern. And I think um, if you've gone to the Sunderland River Walk, you see how the side that goes towards the river area is permeable gravel. And it can be inexpensively, you know, replaced every year or replenished instead of having concrete or cement, um, excuse me, and I think it's still handicap accessible, you know, if you use that um, for people who want to walk through the trails. And I've also seen, um, you know, a lot of people come around my area and check out the birds. And, you know, we have a lot of um, wonderful nature here. And I think um, maybe incorporating some of those into the plans as well, you know, through the areas that you're not disturbing, um, maybe some hiking paths or whatnot, because it's more of a flat surface. Um, because, you know, the state owns Sugar Lake Mountain, they own that area, you know, people, but the one thing I've seen in the community, people are really apt to complain about change, um, but there is a big need for it here, and I think that it would only enhance our community um, and strengthen it, so I just wanted to say thank you, and I really am supportive of this, um, and I think you're doing an amazing job. Thank you, Jennifer. I, I wanted to kind of touch on the um, the parking lot too, and I, I believe the plan is to do a gravel right uh, permit. I mean, maybe the driveway in the driveway right? in is actually paved, but all the parking spots are just gravel, gravel, right, right? Yes. to yeah. allow for the the runoff, the runoff and yes. water, right? Yeah, we just want to have something but maintainable coming in. But I, I just want to say that we were advised under that MVP program that. Um, to get, we could do, if we were willing to pay, we have to do a match anyway. Right. But if we were willing to pay what it would be for the asphalt, then the MVP program more than likely would end up paying for, you know, permeable surfaces. Yep. So the difference. Right. So um, long term, mm -hmm. I mean, when we go to design this, mm -hmm. Um, we would put this into our MVP program, yeah. I would think. I think because, so. Um, you do want this accessible to people in wheelchairs and, and in all generations. Yes. And so if we had, and just like the Leary lot, we need to make mm -hmm. sure that we are paying attention to stormwater runoff and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. So I think when we go to design it, I, I have no problem putting it in as gravel initially, but I think what we would do is put it into our application for See the if MVP cards. And, and, and put permeable uh, pavement surfaces because I, I, I'm so impressed how beautiful they look. Oh, well, they do. And when I went to Portsmouth, New Hampshire for a site visit, um, I, they were just gorgeous. And I think that's, that's what we want to do with this park is to do as much as we can to make it long-term but very green. Right. And you can make it green under these grant programs and accessible um, to ADA. You and know. ADA accessible and all that kind of stuff. I mean, because we can always, you know, we can always tackle that, you know, down the road if we can't right. swing it here. Right. We have the base done. We can right. move on further with, with other funding down the road. If it's, we, it's not like we have to pay for the asphalt. Right. But what we would pay would be, the, you know, an estimate to do the asphalt and then the additional cost, and they would give us the additional cost, and then we would... Yeah, it's worth it. But we have to do a match reason. anyway. Right. So, you know, you're not talking about too much more money to get that permeable pavement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to make sure the neighbors do not have water problems. Right, right. Exactly. Yes. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yes, that's yeah. my big concern, as, as well as staying green. 
Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Right. We don't need to be causing issues by what? enhancing. One of the comments to piggyback about what Lori talked about with the compostable um, toilet. Um, do you have plans to utilize, uh, which is, I've seen on the town common, the solar uh, trash or um, recycling well, uh, unit? I think that would also be helpful. That actually Great suggestion. Yep. yep, we're going to look into that. Yeah. Solar composting? Oh. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Jen. I wasn't sure what exactly it was called, so my apologies. Yep. Yep. Jen gave it. Who's up? Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do, because there's lots of messages coming in in chat, I'm going to do a, a Q&A, and then okay. I'll take a hands up, because yep. I don't want to. Okay. So, um, I have Karen Dodge, and um, she had answered a question earlier, but then she was like confused by it, so she says, what is he saying? So, then she had another question, why does this entire process seem like it was conducted internally and not the public inclusion from the start? Uh, I, I would just say we're at, we're at the start. Um, you know, we have to take, um, you know, the, the town leaders really take a look at what we need to do in the town and we start to get a process rolling and see what's feasible, what's not feasible. And then we take it to the public through obviously town meetings, two of them, to get funding for the project. And then we come to a public uh, process and a public um, discussion like this to say, here's what we're thinking. This, this is what we've been able to make happen so far. Let's take your input. How do we adjust it from here? Nothing set in stone. All we have is the property. This is the beginning. This is the beginning. So yeah. there's, there's really, um, you know, we're elected as leaders to start processes and think, think ahead on things. Um, so that, that's our job is what we do. And then we present those options to the town and, and they ultimately decide whether they want to do it or not. So, and then if they don't, you know, if we do that multiple times and they don't like what we're doing, you know, every May you can you can replace one of us. So that's kind of how we do how we do that. We 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 get the project going. We said this, you know, based on the input that we hear from multiple people over many years, we we, we see an opportunity. We try to make that opportunity happen, and then we get it to a point where it is feasible for the town to move forward and start talking about what do we want there. Maybe we you know through this whole process, anything could go there. But, you know, we, we, we've heard from a lot of people what we would like to have there. So now we're here to find out, is that truly the case? What else do we want to change? Is there something else that we haven't thought about? Or, you know, is this completely, you know, based on all the other input and the public voting for it, is there, is there some other reason that we shouldn't be doing the project? Trevor, this, this was also identified in the 2014 Open Space and Recreation Master Plan, right. which is a whole town input and uh, that was that was identified like I said in 2013-14. It's a long I, process. I would just like to comment that we um, the, the our open space plan does expire in February so we're, we are renewing it. We're going to start the process of renewing it um, this next month so anybody that's interested um, can volunteer for that committee. I was going Please. to say that at the end but um, this is based on the open space plan right. that the town did five years ago. It's a five-year plan, and this is based on that uh, input. Okay. So, the person, the Karen Dodge, I just, because she said, wait, I want to speak live, so I'm promoting her. Can you hear me? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I don't, I'm not sure what the video, video is on, but I wanted to uh, I wanted to say a couple of things. First of all, I, I think this is awesome to have a park in that location, and I really support all of your efforts. Um, but we have been hearing as a butters and neighbors in the area conflicting information. Um, you know, I have heard from, from I have heard that things are as as Trevor said are are up in the air and this is basically fact finding and and people looking for input. Mm -hmm. um, but others who are abutters have heard no, the, the, the parking location is where it is. You cannot change that. And and we really need to know that this really is an inclusive um, process. And I mean, I, I, I know I've been out of town politics for a while, but um, I would like to say that 
think that I'm somewhat tuned in, at least by a Deerfield Now and hearing things, but this is all very new to us. And so I would like to make sure that the people whose property abuts this area know that maybe there's a possibility that they're not going to look out their window and see directly into a parking lot. I was saying that it's ironic. It's ironic that I can look out and look at an apple orchard next to a plastic factory, but yet you are promoting or what appears to be promotion of the only option as being a parking lot right next to someone's historic house. I think that people feel quite left out of this process, even though this has been going on internally for quite a while. And I just want to include everyone in the process because I think that the town park would be really awesome and much better than a lot of the options that might have gone into that location. Yeah, so I think what... Thank you for your... Yeah, I think what hurt us, Karen, was not being able to use Frontier's parking lot for overflow because we really planned on using those 80 to 100 spaces over there for overflow, and now we really have no point of access to get over there. So we literally went from initially 30 or 40 parking spots up to 90 to 100 because of that. Yeah, no, I understood that that was a problem, but why couldn't the parking lot be in between the two playing fields instead of having a parking lot right behind the house? And that may be a possibility. That's something we can look into with the engineering firm. I'm not an engineer, and by no means am I a water runoff expert. So that is a possibility that we can look at. Sure. I know some of the other neighbors mentioned to me that they would like to reduce the parking lot. And my comment to them was, today you're going to love me if we say as the town we're going to reduce the parking lot, but the first event that we have cars parked on North Main Street and kids running in and out of traffic, you're going to spit our name in vain. So I really, my personal preference from a public safety perspective is never go small with parking because it only turns into a massive safety problem. But your point is... Right, but you can always change the location of the parking. So that, and that's a good point by you, and I think that's what we're saying, like this is the beginning, because we, you know, until you said something in a public meeting, we don't have anything on record that that a that an abutter says I don't want a parking spot there. So that's what we do. We take in your input. We say, hmm, that's a good idea. Is there a way with the engineers to, you know, move the parking or would it work? Is it cost effective? You know, what does it cost to put the parking further down? How would it affect the flow of kids in and out? You know, the idea here is that the kids are, you know, on the field and you don't have kids kind of you know, a parking lot in the middle of a bunch of kids running around. So there, there's pluses and minuses to both, but we really wanted to hear your input about that. And maybe, a, you know, a, a resident such as yourself have, have another idea that we didn't think of, like like the parking. Does it go down all, all the way at the other end or something like that? That You know, but we want to work with the engineers and take that in, into account. Also, Karen, I just want to make sure that you realize that we would never put this in without some kind of screening or fencing or... You know something that you know. You, you know what? It takes it takes a while for screening and fencing, and sometimes you know. Just I, I understand sometimes it might cost a little bit more, but maybe a little bit of compromise. Maybe mm-hmm. it's not the far end, but maybe it's in between the fields or. We'll you know, but there are other things being looked at. Yes, we definitely hear you, and we'll, we'll definitely look at that with the engineers, for yeah, sure. There's no, it's a no good point. issue about trying to have us um, be more compromised on that. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks, you. Karen. Jennifer? Yep, yep, one second. Okay. Oh, no, I don't mean to rush <laughs> you. <laughs> I don't mean to rush okay. you. Okay, so we have uh, Jan McCarthy and Jan Lowry. Jan McCarthy, Jan Lowry. Okay. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, John. Welcome. Can you hear me? Yes, yes John. Welcome. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. 
Great, thank you very much. Um, my name is uh, Attorney John McLaughlin, and I represent uh, Judith, who owns the property directly to the south of this entire uh, um, development. Um, I submitted uh, 20 written questions uh, electronically on Friday, last Friday. Did it? Um, I sent them to uh, Casey and to uh, for distribution to the town. Did people get the written questions? Yes, we did. Yes, John, we did, but we're not in a position um, to answer any of your questions right now. We're just taking input. So we have your questions and we'll try to answer them as best we can, okay? Okay, I mean, can I, if I ask any of the questions, will you be able to answer any of the 20 or do we? Uh, not really. I mean, my, my. Not really. If you want to finish that? We're in, we're in um, get, taking the input stage and we have your questions. When we are in a situation where we have some answers, we'll be glad to answer them. We have asked our lawyers about the, you know, um, you know, we're having counsel review some of your questions, so we'll have have the answers as soon as we can. Okay. Thank you, John. I understand. I understand. I understand. Um, will we get notice of further hearings? Of course. Uh, yes. This is just the beginning. All right. Thank you. We would appreciate answers to, uh, uh, you know, some of the questions I've asked uh, pertain to the procedure. You know, I, I recommend that even if the town isn't obligated to obtain site plan review approval, it might be at least a good procedure to utilize to ensure that the, the neighbors um, know what is being planned for and can make comments on specific plans. So before you get deep into this, uh, you know, that's one of the things I asked about, and I think that is something that you might want to do. Even if the planning board doesn't have power, you know, if the town says that the planning board doesn't have power to say uh, what conditions should be imposed or not, it still might at least be a procedure to use rather than, you know, this somewhat amorphic procedure of going forward with our definitive plans with plans that change as we go along. Um, if there would be some procedure to use as we go John, forward. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. I really appreciate your input. The idea is to get as much input as possible from as many people as possible so we can start the process of, of making a plan. So we will keep you informed. We will have several more meetings. This is the first meeting of several meetings. Okay? Thank you. Okay, I, I do want to say that um, someone referenced sidewalks. I don't think there are sidewalks out there, but okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, so we're going to go back to the Q&A, and I have a um, question from Patty. She says, hi, everyone. Um, I would like to start by uh, saying thank you for holding this information session tonight. We know things are not easy during this time, and we appreciate it. I know additional sessions will be held in the future. Will the butters be able to weigh in then regarding concerns on trash, traffic, gated hours, but it, oh, but, yeah. um, also, this may seem trivial, but I know that there is a financial agreement between Frontier Regional and Waitley West uh, for the use of the Hurley. Yeah. Yes. Is there any financial benefit to the town for use by the school? Will they assume maintenance as they did for Hurley? John, you want to uh, right. talk about what you did with Darius? I just, um, before you do that though, I just want to say the reason why we're getting some input is so that we can formalize what was the concept plan. And we haven't got, you know, we had to have something for people to vote on to give an idea of what we were trying to do. But the whole point here is to start, and we certainly would have input for any of others, and, and we would get down to the nitty gritty. This is so much in the beginning, we certainly have no, you know, hours of operation or, you know, things of that line. That's way far down the line. I'm not saying that we won't address it and have people have, you know, input on the process, but this is the very beginning of that process. So go ahead, John. Yeah, so the school has expressed interest in maintaining the field. Uh, 
in the agreement that they can use it for athletic events. They currently bus students to Waitley to Hurley Field, but they also bus students to two different fields in Sunderland. One at Sunderland Elementary School and one off of School Street behind the brand new Sunderland Library and current Town Hall. So there is a, a prospect there to save some busing funds and ultimately maintain the park for us. And they, uh, the superintendent of schools has uh, put in writing endorsing the park and that he is interested in entering into a intermunicipal agreement. There would be a budget savings. It's just not completely clear about how much the savings would be, but not having um, kids shipped out of town and not doing any maintenance and stuff like that out of town will have a uh, positive impact on the budget. And it may, it may be the case that they still need to use, you know, we just don't know. I think that it'll be oh, a, huge, yeah. a huge benefit and, and alleviate a lot of pressure, but they may still wind up finding that, you know, hey, we still don't have enough room. We're only talking two fields here. Um, you know, Hurley, he's pretty big. They've got baseball and all kinds of stuff there. So, you know, we may still be using that, but it may alleviate one or the other, you know. Yeah, to have healthy fields every, you know, year or two, you should be cycling those fields and giving them downtime for six months mm -hmm. and with the prospects of reseeding or anything else for natural health of them. So it, it's not like uh, I think that we would instantly pull out of any other community, but I'm not the school, not the athletic director, and right. certainly not the superintendent. For the grounds. Keep her, Especially yeah. if you're doing a green, non uh, pesticide know, herbicide, and, herbicide yep. and all that kind of stuff, sometimes that has a different schedule than um, you normally would do. Mm -hmm. I mean, that will have some impact. Okay. Um, Patty also has several other things to say, but she keeps adding, so I'm not kind of sure what to do because there's also people that have been waiting for a long time. Well, well let's, let's go on. Angry. Let's go on and we'll come Press back. Press star six to mute or unmute okay, yourself. So, um, Press so star nine to raise your hand. hand. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Welcome. Okay, just a second. I gotta press some buttons here. I don't want to lose you. Okay, I'm take, your time. <laughs> take your time. I think we all are. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 my name is Michael Martin. I live across the street where this great project is going in, and I, I, it, you know, it's a good idea, but I have some concerns. Okay. It seems like we're all focused on the internal, you know, what's going to happen on the inside. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about the outside. I've been here, bought the house in 2013. I live in a flood zone. I didn't know that when I bought the house. So I have some concerns about my property value because I know it's already decreased because I live in a flood zone. And also the sidewalks here are deplorable. Mm -hmm. My wife has fallen, kids by the bike. The traffic, I'm concerned about the traffic. We already have a company down the street and all my complaints are really internal. Uh, I'm sorry, external. Okay. And you know, it's, the, the, the traffic has a study been done, you know, to monitor how many cars and, and um, tractor trailers coming all hours of the night. To, uh, for the park the sidewalks. Let me just let me just look at my notes here. Okay, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm worried about the children's safety externally. There's no sidewalks on the side that the proposed park is going to be going in. Mm -hmm. I have a 90-year-old son. He hangs around with a 90-year-old friend just a few hours down. And there's, you know, I'm, I'm disabled. I spend a lot of my time looking out the window, mm -hmm. as the, the police will probably tell you. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of speeding. Yep. There's been accidents. And I'm sure the chief can vouch to that. Yep. And I'm just worried about my, my house value going down. You know, right now, my house is worth probably close to $300,000. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it's going to be worth, you know, when this park goes in and how it's going to be, you know, presented, you know, going in and the amount of traffic, added traffic, and added uh, concerns about my children and about my safety. You know, I have a wheelchair, powered one. Probably see me buzzing around every now and then when I'm not laying in bed. But these are my concerns. They're external. That's good. Thank you. Those are great concerns. Thank you. Um, we are very conscious of trying to make everything ADA compliant. And safe. 
and safe. Yeah, I'd love to see you wheeling around there, Mike, in your, your chair. That'd be and pretty I, cool. And I think actually, yep. um, for the most part, what we're envisioning would actually increase the value of your property. And you know, people don't people don't stop at, at that crosswalk. You know, you know, I've almost got killed. You're right. You know, and I would lo I love I love to see a cruiser parked on the side doing you know speed radar and stuff. And I think that really needs to be enforced. If we're talking about putting in this park, I'm worried about the children. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. More so than my home that more so than my home value. Mm -hmm. My son's life is worth more than my house. Of course. Of course. Yeah, we are up there on radar all the time, Mike. Yep. But Mike, we're, we're um, I, I, almost I, at 7 o'clock. I'm asking you to increase it. You know, the community needs to be aware. If you're proposing this part, you know, great. How it's presented is what I'm worried about. Okay. Safety, yep. safety, safety. I'm, I'm an old union president. You okay. know, so I'm not uh, illiterate when it comes to, you know, talking, um, you know, politics and, and Things like this, but mm -hmm. those are my, you know, the sidewalks my wife fell um, just about a week ago. And she got pretty banged up. They're, they're all cracked. They are. They're in they bad are. shape. They're terrible. Bad shape. Actually, that's they're on horrible. The they're horrendous. Yeah. So I have a sidewalk in front of my house that hasn't been replaced. And, you know, these are things that need to be looked at. Yes, they do. You know? And that's yeah. part of the external external thing. Yep. Yes, and that would be part of the project mm -hmm. in making it more walkable and social. No okay, thank you, Mike. And I'm also... Thank you. We, we, yeah. have, we have to move on as many people as possible. Um, I really, Michael, so thank you. We will keep this, and please... Please keep attending. more meetings, okay? Yeah, please keep attending. And we are addressing the parking lot, uh, I mean the sidewalks further on in the agenda, just to let you know. Hey, I'm promoting Kathy with Truba. Welcome, Kathy. Hey, Kathy. You're muted, Kathy. Kathy, we can't hear you. There she goes. Here she is. Hi, Kathy. Uh, still muted. No. Can you can you talk, Kathy? She's gone. Yeah, we. Um, let me see if I can. Jen, we need to um, finish up here, so um, can you get a few more people on? Sure, so I have um, a question that came in, anonymous attendee, because I would like, uh, also like to know more about Treehouse Brewing, might work with the town, there's a lot of land and parking with the town community soccer fields on the north side of the elementary youth game. Um, Will Treehouse have music events? I don't, you know. Oops. We, we don't Did have those answers sure. yet. Treehouse has not um, signed, they've signed a purchase agreement, but they have not actually um, purchased. purchased the property yet. So don't worry, we will have conversations. Next, Jen. And uh, Lori, Lori wants to know if there's gonna be an outdoor skating rink, temporary structure for winter only. Well, a that's great a good idea. idea. Thank you. Okay, oh. and Patty um, has, um, because also, what is the plan to transport students athletes to the field? Is there a thought of raised road structures at the school and at the crossing to the entrance to ensure slowing of the traffic, which we all know is a challenge in this area? Another question would be, being that it's a town park, um, I would hope it would be dog and cat friendly. Okay. I know the school has been on the field, yeah, and town funding. Um, that would not be the case here, correct? Um, I, yeah, I think the Recreation Commission would ultimately set that policy later yeah. on down the road. That's right. not something that we're here to address tonight. But that's something it's good to put yep. the comment in. Yep, for sure. Yep. Is, Dog there any, is there any other comments, Jen? That you think I, know that, I, I love the skating with thing. Yeah, that was a good idea. I know that uh, Chris Harris wanted to speak. I don't know if there's is, others. Is Chris Harris there? I mean, usually has it comments or no? Yeah, sure, go ahead. We can read them. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Patty says, sorry, Karen, but we are also butters if you need to know. And then Patty also said, with respect to the attorney on the phone, with will the questions become public knowledge yes. along they with the They are already public record. Yep. They are public record already. 
Um, did, did you get any other comments? Yep, thank you again. And thank you to John, that's Patty. And she says, we are interested in knowing more about the crossing areas to access the park. I would assume this cost, question mark, um, would it come from the park funds or would the town have to take it? We probably that, have to. That's hard to say. Yeah, we'd have to look yeah. at engineering. Yeah, no, Patty's amazing to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Kathy, so, did you, um, or Kathy, were you able to get on the. Um, is Kathy oh, there she is. There she is. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear us, Kathy? She's back. Oh, oh, there oh, she is. I think we got her. Okay. I don't know what happened. All right. Welcome. Okay. So, so I have this. Thank you. I have a couple of quick questions. Um, on the wetlands, the 8.5 acres of uh, total land, how much is that wetland? Oh, I don't think we've ever added it up, Kathy, because there's, as you're going in on the far left, the back side, where it abuts the other property, that is wetlands. There's a sliver down the middle where the trees are that Lori was talking about earlier, and there's a tiny sliver, like itsy-bitsy, on the north side towards Pelican, but we've never added all those up into one specific area, so I don't know that. That's going to be part of the engineering? Um, we haven't gotten that far yet. Well, there was a statement that the wetland was a major factor in the increased budget. So the increase was over a million dollars. So that's got to be an awful lot of. I mean, I'm curious what's happening to this wetland. Are 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 there ecosystems there that need to be relocated? Um, this is a protected land. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm I'm. I'm neutral on the position of this park because I don't have enough information. I'm not informed enough about its full effect, not only on the wetlands, but on the abutters, on the community as a whole, Correct. with traffic, with sidewalks, with safety. You know, other we're with you. About, Kathy, um, Kathy, for the Kathy, we're right with you. Kathy, we're just starting the process. We do not have engineering on this at this point. We're taking in your concerns. But yeah, we're right with you. We don't have all the information either. We don't have that information yet. We haven't paid for it. I mean, it's... it's we allocated right. money. I mean, this is not something that I... Go ahead. Well, we've allocated money at town meeting, so now we can afford to go to get an engineering firm. But we're trying to keep our costs down, so we're trying to get as much input prior to engaging in an engineering firm so we have an idea of what we want so and what we're concerned about so that we're not wasting their time um, having them give us options that, we're, that are not going to work. What we want to do is get an idea in our head and what our concerns are and be organized when we go out and get an engineering firm. I think one of my other concerns too was at the special town meeting, there, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I, I'm not quite sure how 120 people reflect um, the void of 5,000 people that live in the community. I, I, I have some concerns about that. Um, and, and again, I, I'm, this is not something, I, I'm just sitting in the middle of the road on it. I, I just want to be informed and I want to make sure that um, our residents in this community um, residents with children, residents that are older, residents that want to make sure their property values maintain those values, that their voices are heard and that we have an opportunity to, to um, really move forward with a, a collective comfort in the decisions that we make yep. as, a, as a whole community. That's, 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 that's incredibly great. important. That's great. Uh, actually, and just please, to point out to you, we have about a 14 to $16 million annual budget and we have about 200 and some odd people that show up for annual town meeting. So having 120 people that come to a, a meeting related to this was actually really great. And we intend to have as much informational meetings as possible. Yeah. And I agree, I mean, one of the things that's so hard is that people don't participate in the local government and we are always trying to find people um, and if you would really like to participate, we are having the open space committee meeting, and the open space committee 
in the next month or two, we'll be deciding, we'll be reviewing and updating the current open space plan that the town adopted five years ago. So this plan will be adopted, and everybody that's on this call that is concerned, like yourself, should volunteer for this committee, because then you can decide what, what is our priority for the town, and that renewed, updated open space plan will then indicate where we're going on this park. So it is part of the process, and there is plenty, plenty of opportunity for people to come and participate. And we want you to participate. Yeah. We are begging people to participate. Yeah. Is there something on the, on the on the town website that we can, um, per, you know, read over and preview? I mean, I, I would be happy to do that. I mean, I think part of the problem is what is our community outreach, right? How do we get people involved in in local government? We have a great community here, mm -hmm. but, but we need everyone's voice, right? Um, so that there's a shared interest and, and, and investment in our community. That's, that's kind of where I'm at. Can I just have one question? I just have one more one more question, and it's about um, the upkeep and, and the cost of that. It looks like some of that stereo Modesto said yes, Frontier would upkeep this park. That's a that's a lot of upkeep. That's a lot of money. That sounds like it's money coming out of the budget. I understand that there's cost savings, not busing students. Um, and there was also something about keeping the responsibility within Deerfield instead of asking the towns within the Frontier Regional School District to become involved. I'm, I'm curious what that means. Well, if we ask the other towns to contribute, um, it would be similar to um, this, the same contribution level that we have existing with Frontier. So Deerfield would have a 50% um, matching funds from other towns. But the problem is, then we would lose control of that for just 50% of the cost of the project. So short term, it is lovely that someone wants to give us a million dollars towards a $2 million project, say. But on the other hand, if we're talking about a town park and town activities and town celebrations, it makes no sense over a period of time of 20 to 30 to 50 years, 100 years, the next, you know, the 400th celebration, that we have to share um, and ask for permission to use this in the middle of our town. I think we have justified in our open space plan and recreational needs of many, many, uh, you know, over the years meetings, people coming and saying, we don't have fields for our kids. We don't have a meeting place for everybody. This is where we need um, our own property. And for a million dollars, to tell you the truth, it's not worth it in my mind. Right. So this is this is about control of access rather than yes. um, shared cost. Right. Yes. It, we need our own spot. We really do. And we have and we have a. And we have enough need in our town that I would think we would use it all the time. I, I really don't feel like sharing it. Not that it's lovely not to have an extra someone help with the cost, but if you're looking for the future and the ability yeah. to use the property, I think we need to retain control. So there be, it will be shared with communities as, as people bust in and want to use this property, but when we want specific access at specific times, we have control of that and can close it, open it as necessary. We right. own it. And to the public. Right. And if you have a complaint, you're going to come to us as the Deer, Deerfield Select Board, and we're going to be able to deal with it. I don't want to have to go to some right. regional committee sure. and say, oh, the yeah. trash is not getting collected. Can you make sure that this gets collected? Right. Right, right, right. Kathy, if you do me a favor, if you shoot, okay. shoot me an email, I will send you over the, the wetland delineation, so at least you can peek. Okay. And, and that way you can email me anytime. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yep. Yeah, I, I will, Jen. Thank you very much. I'm just curious about um, you know, what, it, 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 it makes me uncomfortable to start, you know, you don't, you don't play with Mother Nature, right? You kind of got to be, um, 
um, mindful of our natural resources and our planet because uh, that's all we got. Yep. Totally, totally we're, agree. We're the first community in the state to be municipal vulnerability preparedness certified, and we have been working with the state on climate change, and um, we were, and and still are, cutting edge in what we're trying to do as a small town. We are one of the most advanced small towns. Great. Well, I, I I appreciate your efforts a lot. I really do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. We need to finish up here because we have other business and under the governor's um, under the governor's guidelines with the COVID, we have to close up and be out of here by 9.30. So um, Jennifer, well, is there a couple more. other people that we could hear from? Yeah, let's hear from them then. Go ahead. Um, two more. Two more comments. I have on uh, Gail and Mike Dupree. My property is in the part of 137 North Main. Okay. And the band shall be in the house. Who is responsible if my house floods? And please, in cap, move the parking lot away from our property. Gail and Mike. Thank you for those okay. comments. Thank you. We took note of that. Um, is there anyone else? John, you have another one? Yes, yeah, sure. Yep, Gail, Francesca. I mean, sorry, Greg. Sorry, Greg. It's been a long day. Hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead, Greg. We can hear you, Greg. Okay. Um, I, um, I wanted to ask, my, my understanding of this project at the beginning, um, I mean, I guess this is still the beginning, right? Yep. Yes. Um, was that it was to have one soccer field, not two soccer fields, and I just wanted to ask if that's something that I've misunderstood or whether that's something that has changed in the process as it's evolved. The only thing I can say about that is that um, everyone that we've been get, hearing input from, the uh, one field is, is not enough. So again, this is the beginning of the process. Greg, we're not really sure what the, all the competing things are. And um, I hadn't actually thought about you know, a skating rink kind of thing and you know, having that come up tonight. The whole point of this whole process is to take as many ideas as possible but um, after listening to the, um, Rob on the recreation and Sue Antonellis, um, we were thinking that one soccer field is probably not enough. So it did start off as one, one soccer field? Yes. No, I don't think and so. Park. Well, no. it's always been, I mean, this, this is the very beginning. So we don't really, I mean, I'm just saying that this is the beginning. We're taking all input. So nothing is set in stone at this point. Okay, well, the reason I'm bringing it up is because I didn't even know this was in the works because um, you know, I, didn't, I didn't know that the, the special town meeting was coming up. I, I was fortunate to run into um, Mrs. Pichort, um at the crosswalk when she was uh, in the, that morning of the special town meeting and she mentioned it to me and said that they needed a quorum and that there was a park you know, being proposed and it was going to be over behind the high school. I knew about the piece of land from the previous town meeting and I um, love the idea of having a park. I um, have been on the Town of Tommen Committee and we've talked about expanding the Town of Tommen to turn it into something that resembled a park, but it was more you know, pedestrian friendly and park-like, but it was not adequate, obviously, because it's so small and we talked about the possibility of there being something more like a park across the street beyond the Leary lot. And um, I feel like when I'm looking at the, the um, the engineering, you know, the drawing, that this is not really what my understanding of a park is. It's, it's really a, a sports complex and there's a lot of parking and um, it's nothing like what I thought Mrs. Petrarch was telling me about. So I did not vote and support it, even though I went with the intention of supporting it because I would love to see a park. But to me, a park is a, is a natural or close to natural you know, space for people to enjoy some forest, some fields, some water, and, you know, find if there's a ball to go in the park. But this doesn't seem like a park to me. It seems like a, two soccer fields and a parking lot. And I wouldn't, wouldn't go out of my way to go to a soccer field to walk around or to walk my dog unless there was no other option. And I think that most people in town probably, 
you know, feel the same way. We're going to be walking alongside a beautiful piece of land, looking at, you know, the trees on, on, on Judith Rathbone's property, but that's private property. We're not going to be able to go on that land and enjoy that. So um, the reason I bring all this up is because I know, Carolyn, years ago you mentioned to me the possibility of connecting the senior center and the town hall and the school, um, the elementary school, and the library with with walking paths, and um, which sounds very much like what we're proposing to do here. Only this, this proposal, the bicycle lane or the walking paths don't go anywhere. They don't connect anything. Whereas what you were saying to me was that you know it would be a wonderful thing, and I agree completely. It, the buildings in the center of town were connected by a bicycle path and walking paths. And the way that the roads are right now, there's no safe way for children to get to the elementary school on bicycles. Because once they get off of North Main Street, Pleasant Street narrows and there's no room to expand it to have bicycle paths. Right, so right. It has been my intention since I was on the planning board in the 80s and now as a select board that Deerfield becomes uh, South Deerfield Village becomes much more uh, strongly walkable and sociable in your connectivity. And the common project and the you know Leary lot and, and now the donation of the church with the senior center, always, always it has been our intention uh, as the select board, this board, and my intention since the early 80s was to do a walking path all the way around town that is safe for all generations. And I feel that now that we own the church property, we have the senior center and the Channing Beat property that we've been investing time in over the summer is off the table mm -hmm. as, as a purchase, that we are going to refocus on getting this walking path and going, and it does connect. If you've gone to our town meeting, as you said, you can see that it connects the elementary school, the library, the elementary school, going to Frontier, and then we figure out a way to get to the back of this property. Um, it would connect all the way around so people have the ability to do walking and do outside yoga or Tai Chi or whatever um, all over town. The whole point of this is to make people have a safe, really good social um, ability to move around downtown. So I, I'll, I'll just respond a little bit. Um, this park isn't to solve all of our problems. Um, this park is going to be uh, have a couple soccer fields. Um, it's going to have a walking park around it, and and we don't know what else. We're, we're in the beginning of processing that, but um, this park here isn't solving all of our walkability issues. It's gonna, not even going to solve all of our soccer issues or our park issues or our gathering issues. It's a small. It's a small. It's relatively large if you're staying there, but it's a small. It's a small area. We we have a lot of other projects we want to work on. I think just let's focus on what we're working on here right now is to possibly get the best ideas we can about getting a um, a couple playing fields. And again, these aren't always soccer fields. They can be anything. They're wide open fields. So I mean, they're drawn with lines on a map. But when you're standing there, you know, unless you have the cones out, it's a big open field. So. Um, We'll just, you know, again, this isn't going to fix all of our issues. Um, we, we have to address, you know, safety for kids getting from the school or getting other areas. We've heard tonight a lot of great ideas. We'll hear more great ideas as we go along in the process. I just want to, you know, just bring back to the fact that th this isn't going to fix all of our issues, but it is going to alleviate quite a bit from what, where we are right now. We don't have a large enough space to gather um, and, and to play, you know, have a small concert series or have a, you know, have a couple ball, ball games. So again, it's, it's not the Taj Mahal, it's not everything that's going to, you know, it's not going to solve all our issues or all of our walking or all of our, you know, biking issues or all of that. It's just, it's just going to be a small park, um, ball field park, you know, however you want to call that. But um, it's not Child's Park in Northampton. That's, that's not what we're building here. So just wanted to kind of bring that I, back to reality. I just want to say we really have to wrap up and I know this is so awkward to have these informational meetings during a pandemic. We're trying the best we can to take as much input as possible. So um, 
we'll call our office if you want to volunteer for the open space plan renewal and also um, if you submit some to our office also if you have questions that were not answered tonight or concerns we are going to continue Karen, our Karen, yes. yeah. I have to interrupt you I'm sorry I, I don't mean to be you know creating problems or against things I just feel like many 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 people for many years have been trying really hard myself included to try to figure some of these serious problems that the town has especially in the center of south deerfield with traffic with safety with um walkability with making it pedestrian friendly the studies that were done in 2012 recommended many wonderful things and we're using two-thirds of the CPA money that many of these people on all these different committees have been trying for years to get plans worked out and you know to get everything right before asking for CPA money so that they could get you know different things to happen and now it's in this special town meeting it happened very quickly and I don't think most people knew about it I mean if we were really if we were really talking about being democratic we would have a way for everyone to be notified a month ahead of time before a special town meeting with a robocall to let them know that they you know, needed to get Greg. ready for this. Greg, Greg. I, need to, I need to interrupt Greg. now, Greg. I just want to tell you, Greg, that we had an Greg. annual town meeting and then a special town meeting months later. So it's not like this was dropped on you out of the blue. I mean, this we've had many meetings about this. Nobody knew, nobody knew Greg. that there were going to be Greg. two soccer fields that are parking tonight. Right. Uh, I think right. Until it was both uh, that, night, that night, the people that showed up were mostly people that didn't know about it because word of mouth they had heard about it. Right. I, I, so disagree, I, I disagree with that. Right. Right. We have to finish up here. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. I right. disagree. We have to move on. We're going to be in violation of the governor's order. Carolyn, you're moving on by talking over me and cutting me off. I'm right. trying to say something that was I'm said sorry. earlier in the meeting, but. Several Greg, I got your point. We tried very hard. Please, Jennifer, we need to move on. Thank you very much. Greg, I will call you. Greg, I will call you um, and talk to you offline. Oh, and tell everyone in the community how do we have input in this process as it moves forward? We're going to have more of these more meetings. We're going to have more meetings, Greg. And you can volunteer for the committee. But the next you're going to be able to be heard. Greg. Greg, I haven't put you back as an attempt so much. We have to okay. move on, Greg, Not because we, the governor need, makes us be out of the building, public buildings, and shut down by 9.30. And we still have a full agenda, so we need to move on, Greg. I'm really sorry, and we've gone a half an hour over what we intended. I will call you, and I certainly am, you know, I, I will always listen to any concerns and I will always return people's calls. So I will call you so we can finish the conversation. Thank you. One, did you have one more, Jennifer? Um, you, Chris had asked early on. I think, oh, Is Chris, he done? Okay. Is Chris, I know Chris wanted to say something Okay. Too. Well, no, he, All right, we're gonna do this. This will be the last one because I'm really nervous about not being able to finish our agenda tonight. Chris, go ahead. Okay, so, so yeah, I'll go rapid fire. I don't expect any dialogue back and forth, but just to get it on the record and kind of tie things together here. Thank you. Um, first of all, I would say that I've heard a lot about uh, butters. Uh, I think we need to change the tone of the dialogue to be neighbors. Thank and you. if we start approaching it that way in terms of the go for process, I think it'll work out much better for everyone involved. Thank you. Um, and that that ties into my second point about the process going forward. It, it's really not clear. A number of persons have uh, articulated that this evening. Um, is what is the process? What's the inclusivity, et cetera? I don't know that this is an opportunity to form a different committee or to leverage the open space committee to get more people involved in it. But I mean, the different stakeholders need to get involved formally quickly and that doesn't mean bogging down the process. It can be with a, with a, uh, um, a mission or a mandate to do something very fast, 
time bonded, you know, over the next three months in terms of returning input and deliverables, et cetera, to the select board in terms of what they want to see in terms of modifications or adjustments to this plan. I think the overall project is very worthwhile. It just needs some fine tuning, and there's no reason to slow this process down by having a community or an expanded open space committee, however you want to do it, but it's clear that you've heard from everybody that they want some more formal involvement in a process and a procedure. Yes, that's significant. The third point I would say is that there's real issues, you know, logistically in terms of this plan, the connection to Frontier, to the Frontier campus. Whether it's sidewalks that are mentioned or Main Street, linking the Frontier, I guess it would be the north-facing parking lot of Frontier, to the parking lot and to the campus of this new complex. Whether there's another linkage between the, I think it's a football field out in Frontier, along the railroad tracks to the side of this complex. Someone has to look at pedestrian linkages to this complex from the existing Frontier campus, and so that was my third main thing. A fourth point here, too, is because there was early on made when we were presenting this project at the beginning of this meeting about people supporting it, nonprofits, others, et cetera. We didn't hear anything about Pelican involvement, and so I'm just throwing it out there. Somewhere along the line, they can be involved. I mean, they've done great landscaping there, et cetera. They have ideas how to lay out the campus. They should be involved because they could help on this process. The fifth thing that I can say, and I assume somebody's recording this, that's why I'm going around with fire. Yep. Budget estimates. For me to have somebody say that the budget now is estimated to be virtually double what it was initially, that's a little problematic. I understand it can happen, but we can't go through that again. There can't be surprises in the future, and I think the wetlands and water management issues are the wild card here, and that could be an area for exposure on budgets, and we need to pin this down because I think townspeople and taxpayers just expect tighter numbers than what we've presented so far, but we understand there's complexity with this site and this whole area. And that ties into even tree management as kind of a point number six or 5.5, that there's concern about loss of trees, but we're losing a lot of trees that are 60 years old in this town, and we're losing natural causes. So this is probably an opportunity for those people that are concerned about that of matching new trees to the current soil, climate conditions, et cetera, so that we actually can replenish trees that we're losing in the town. And then I guess the other thing, too, that was brought up, a couple of other side issues here, is that people are concerned about traffic, speeding, et cetera, like that. By the way, speeding in this town is a major issue everywhere. Any of us that live on residential streets know that it's become waste tracks, and they put up these solar-powered speed signs that give you the smiley face and the frown face, and you know they work pretty well in the direction that you're driving in. They don't work well in the other direction, and then they take them down after a month. And so we need to think about, if we're going to make a $2 million investment, we need to think about investments like that in targeted areas to get everybody consistently using caution in terms of their speed around this entire town. And so that means putting up monitors and leaving them there, because that's the only thing that seems to work, not taking them down after one or two months. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Thank you, Mr. Hanson.
Um, and I think that's all my point. All right, thank so you. So the speed signs, we just got two more in two weeks ago. We took them down for the winter because we don't want them up in the winter. And we just got a $12,000 grant last week. We are getting two more. We are going from four to eight in and a we month. Them. We so them. we went from four to eight, Chris. So you will see more of them in town. And the best part is when you go the opposite direction, it's still recording you. <laughs> it shows us inbound and outbound numbers, speeds, day and time, everything other than recording your license plate. It gives us all the graphics. It's pretty impressive. It I've is. Seen and I can email you one of those documents but if I, you want to see it. But I, I, I hear what he's saying. Like, like when you, when you, as a driver, you're like, oh, oh, I better slow down. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I have to cut you guys off. Yep. Chris, all right. Let's thank go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your input. I'm sorry, everyone, that we have to um, uh, cut it short. This is only the start. And um, we took really good notes. And uh, we'll make every possibility um, to make sure we incorporate um, people's um, concerns and what they brought up into further discussion, okay? Thank you. Um, we have to move along. I apologize to everybody, but like I said, we have to get out of here and we still have a full agenda. Um, is there any uh, selectmen announcements? Thank you both for coming by. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there any selective, uh, announcements? Do you have just, anything? Uh, just that, um, I mean, you may talk about uh, okay, COVID. We'll have, we'll have COVID. Okay, so I do okay. want to. I just want to thank Kevin um, for lighting uh, uh, Veterans Day. Uh, he started lighting the common. It's very cheerful to see the common. Um, don't forget uh, the 350th is meeting on November 30th, and anybody interested, please um, contact our office or Jennifer Remar um, about volunteering for the 350th. Board of Health um, announcements. We have a COVID-19 update. Um, I just, it's, it's very concerning that we have more community spread. It's truly community spread now. Um, we're, you know, I always anticipated working 20 or 30 hours a week at minimum as a select board member, but usually not in two days of the first part of the week. Uh, you know, this is a, turning out to be 24-7, and mm -hmm. um, our goal is to keep the community safe. Our goal is to keep the schools open. So it's really, really critical that people become creative and be very safe over Thanksgiving. you got to do everything you can to keep in your own households. There is truly community spread. We're, we're tracing and contact tracing everybody on a, on a daily basis. Overnight. Into the night. Overnight, so, yeah. Overnight. People are up I mean, all night just, doing this, so. Oh, it's craziness. So please, please, I, I know my, even my parents are, they are in Berniston. We are not, because they're a separate household with my sister and her, her partner, they are having Thanksgiving separate, but uh, we ordered separate turkeys, so we're cook cooking diamond turkeys up separately, but we're still sharing sides. So we're going to drive up and, and, you know, drop off, you know, sticky buns and rolls, and, and I'm going to get my mom's uh, cranberry, my know, cranberry sauce, but we're going to do it outside and just exchange and, and do, you know, hellos and come back. So please try to think about that. Please try not to combine households um, and be safe. Be as creative as you can and wear masks all the time. Is there anything, Dave, or yes. Clever you want to say? Yes. So um, last night um, we had a um, four-town uh, Board of Health meeting. Yes. And um, I don't know if that was on your agenda as well, but we're, you know, we had a four-town Board of Health meeting and we have, um, collectively voted. I think Conway was kind of getting their meeting together. They didn't have a quorum at the time, but um, all other three towns had voted to. Um, we, we really want to keep our school open um, long past Thanksgiving. We're very concerned about the level of, of infection right now. So what we're going to do is um, we had voted to make the week after Thanksgiving, a remote only week. And, and there's messages that have gone out by the school. I'm just kind of repeating it in this, in this instance here. Um, the, the Deerfield Elementary School 
really needs to get the kids back um, four days a week. Um, it's been very difficult on the teachers to do and, and the students to do uh, remote and, and in person at the same time. And, um, and, and the kids are losing a lot by not being there. So uh, the teachers really wanted and the administration wanted to get the kids back uh, full time and we're, you know, four days a week. So we're trying that or at least planning for that. That, that process can change because of what happens in our community. But the idea is, is, is if we can shut down for that week and not shut down, but be um, remote only, not in person that week, that gives the uh, teachers enough time to rearrange the rooms because when all the kids come back, they need to be spread out more. So there's a lot of moving between, built, between rooms uh, to set up so it's safe when the kids come back again. Um, so that, I just want to make that everybody aware that, that it'll be a remote only week, the week after Thanksgiving. We're hoping that after that, uh, when the kids come back, they can come four days a week. We're keeping a really close eye on what's happening in our community and you know, statewide. So again, that, everything changes on a day notice, but not even hour notice, but uh, that, that's kind of the goal that we're going for for our elementary school at the moment. I don't think that's the plan for the other schools and every school is different because of the building that they're in. So um, that's just, I just wanted to mention that. I am very concerned about, you know, what's going on. Please wear your mask. I know it's fatigue. We hear that a vaccine is, you know, today, you know, uh, Pfizer was a 95% safe and effective. Um, they're gonna go, you know, immediately in the next couple of days for um, a, an emergency approval. That's still gonna be months by the time they can ramp up and then, figure out the logistics of getting it out here, who's going to do it. You know, we're equipped and ready to go, but we've got, you know, a lot of training still to do. So it, it's months before we get enough people vaccinated. So, and, and, and you just look across the country and the, the, the level of cases going up, but it's, it's that, that heartbreaking, you know, hospitalization, uh, hospitalization and the deaths, yeah. you know, 1700 deaths yesterday alone. I mean, I was mortified on 9-11, you know? We lost 3,000. We're losing 3,000 in a couple of days. I mean, it is horrendous. Um, it's heartbreaking for these families. It seems abstract, but it gets, it's getting closer and closer and closer, and I just implore you, it's not a, it's, you need to wear your mask, social distance, do the hand sanitizer, just be as careful as you can. We will get through this. It's just gonna take some time. And um, that's there is there is light in the tunnel. We are the latest plan. Of course, there's no federal cooperation at the moment, but the state plan is the same as we did in the H1N1. We are in phase three and four. We will be receiving vaccine, and it looks like the best state F estimates. Which who knows? Do we start? You know, is there cooperation with the new administration? starting you know this week or are we going to have to wait till january 20th who knows but right now the best estimate is that we're going to receive vaccine at some point in the summer um, and you know if we get going it could be a little bit earlier if we have to wait till january 20th we're talking next fall but it, there is an end to this and we want everyone to be here when we don't comes. want to lose anyone so, and we want to keep our schools open. I think that's really, really so critical. Important. So please make smart decisions and wear your masks, okay? Thank you. No, it's just, you know, just please. Hey, Carol, everybody, this is Dick. Everybody consider that Facebook is not a news organization and most of the stuff on there is not credible. So, you know, you've got to go by your public health officials and the, that have the credible information. You know, this thing is not a hoax. This is real, and it's affecting everybody. Dick, uh, Dick you have, you're on? I didn't even realize that. What would you like to say? Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'd like to follow up. I don't want to strike fear in anybody, so I'm just trying to fill you in. We, we've got a few businesses in town that have positive COVID cases. I got an email from the state today that they're coming in and going to monitor one of our bigger businesses in town because of their COVID cases. 
and we're monitoring a few of those. We've got other places. I didn't know one single person that had COVID last week. Now I know five, mm -hmm. and the five are from the local area, okay? And so I'm just, the mask thing, like Trevor has said, and Dave, we, we've got to be vigilant in that. I, I drive down Turtle Oak Street every day, and I see multiple people together. I don't know. I know some of them are not related, not from the same household, wearing no mask because they can think they can just do that. I'm highly concerned about that, and I guess I don't want to be long-winded about that, but I, I also have a concern about the actual town hall, the operation of that. I, I would like to ask the board not to allow any other boards to use the town hall in multiple people. Um, I, my observations have not been good. I, you know, one person infecting the town hall shuts the town hall down. Yep. We are majorly socially distancing in the town hall from one side to the other. We're limiting the number of people that can be in the room at the same time. We're taking every precaution, but then again, I'd like to ask the board not to allow more than one person from another board to set foot in that town hall by appointment only. They can do Zoom meetings. Let me put it this way, I'm doing the Zoom meeting and I never thought that I would do it. <laughs> um, I think it's very critical that we make some decision on that. So I'd like the board to make a policy on the entrance into the town hall. Um, given the amount of cases, I have absolutely no problem with that, Dick. Um, the profile of what is happening now is totally different than the beginning of the, and most of, of all this pandemic. So, um, I would entertain a motion, and then we can discuss it some further. Well, we have the... It's actually in the reopening plan that I submitted to you, Yeah, Carolyn, that up. Do you want to do you want to talk about that now, or yeah. um, do it since Dick is on the line? Why don't we? Okay. Casey, do you want to? Do you want to go over that? Chime Casey? in on that. Since Dick is on the line. Sure. I what we did with the opening plan was I made a change to paragraph in phase three opening section, and actually Dick and I went through it um, because I wanted him to check and make sure it okay. fit within the. Yeah. The parameters of what his advice was. So if you look, sorry, I'm clicking and talking at the same time. No, that's all right. We have to I don't have a package. That's all right. We have to um, I don't have any problem you, with your um Dick, did you have any problem with so there were two changes I made. Well let's hear them. Okay. The highlighted ones. The highlighted changes. I added a as you know, we successfully and you know, this was earlier this month. We did successfully run the foot clinic, but that was a specialized service that we did in support of the elderly population that had not been able to get that right. particular service. So no. we made a change to have a specific self-certification form. Uh, again, Dick and I went through that. Yep. Um, town council suggested that I add it to the reopening plan because it does affect the intersects in the town hall. But the other change I made was I made a change in the, um, a paragraph in the phase reopening that states the certain number of people would be lab in for meetings. And that's on page 12. Is that the 112? 12, I think. Yes. Well, it says so. Uh, I don't have, I can't. Well, it says the town I will need a new The town will continue to follow the requirements for remote participation as noted in several executive orders promulgated by the Governor Baker. With changes to occupancy restrictions, meetings may be held in hybrid fashion with only one attendee allowed in the town hall. Completely remote meetings will continue to be the preferred model for purposes of slowing virus speeds and protecting the health and safety. So um, I think we're. Those were just, that was something that we and I discussed. So yep. is that. That's right on. I think what That's you were. Uh, you're, you're, and I, 
I think what you were looking for was um, if a board member wanted to come in by appointment to do some business, get some information, whatever, they can, they can do that. Um, by but appointment. We would, by appointment, and, but we would like most of, you know, all the boards to, to be able to try to do as much remote as they can. Um, this executive board, um, we would like to try and do the same as much as we can, but there are times where, you know, we're, we're the executive board of the town the and time. we need to run the town. There's a lot that we need to do together um, and as we stay separate and face masks, but, um, but I think that there, there are times where we can and will try to do remotely, uh, even if we're in another room or if we're at our house, or I think more and more we can do that. There are certain times where using the board, um, having, having FCAP film us, there's, there's different ways that we sometimes need to come together, but I think we'll try to make an effort as much as we can to also be remote. Um, just we're, just we're, till we get through this. I was just gonna say, we're only meeting twice a month. Yeah. And everything else is remote. We're doing everything else remote. Yeah. All, all other weekly meetings yeah. are, are remote. So yeah. it's not like we aren't making an effort. Dick, does that make sense to you? It, it, it makes sense, and I, and I guess I probably shouldn't say this, but my observations of not the select board, but of another board was not very good. And we had to tell members of the board to put masks on, and I they didn't particularly like it. And well, uh, I, I have a problem, and I, I would say that here, Casey and myself need to be authorized to tell somebody to leave the building. Yeah. Not the I, I will make a motion right now that if, if you are not allowed in this building, period, unless you have a face mask on. You're not even period. Supposed, you're not even supposed to be in the parking Thank lot. You. Yeah, you, you should. You're not even supposed to be in the parking well, lot. Keep, that. Go ahead, Casey. Well, but keep in mind there are some instances where there is an allowance, and this is in the governor's order for medical or health reasons. But, yes, but they have to try to be cognizant of that. But, but they have to give us the yeah. medical reason. They have to submit it to us. And and and, there, and if we can accommodate them, and, no, yeah. anybody. And if and if if they actually it says May, Carolyn, I checked. So it says well, May. What I'm saying. I mean, I can't walk up to a person who may have a health condition and ask him to show me an allowance. That, That's actually we had that clarification. I think what I, what I'm saying is that um, let's try on all facets that we can to make it not needed to be in this building. And if they do have to be in the building. We ask them to wear a mask, and if they if they can't, um, we really find out what, what business we could take care of for them outside the building. Because we have staff here that we really need to protect, and we need to protect them as well. We have so, to have the operation of the town continue. There's got to be a way that um, you know most of the business could be handled outside the building if they if they can't have a mask uh, on, and they're, and and they're, if they have a health condition. I'm not sure anybody would really want to be around other people at this time anyways. So anything we can do to help them, all I'm saying is that uh, we're not going to have meetings in this building where people can come in and sit down and take off their masks. Just not going to happen. So we're not going to have meetings in the building when that happens. If you're in this building without a medical excuse, without a mask, we're asking you to leave. So that, 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 that's kind of where we're at. So um, we just need, we need this staff thank, to be. Thank, thanks, sir. Well, we're going to vote. Thanks, sir. I appreciate that because we don't need other people wandering through different offices just because they want to socialize or get other information. Thank you very much because well, that's what we're trying to reduce. We're trying to reduce the mingling factor, too. Thank you. However, I just want to say, when we, we, the town office is a repository for information. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've made an effort to make appointments, have information prepared, yep. and either pass it out via the foyer mm -hmm. or pass it out in another manner, unless somebody does need a space to look at something, and then we limit that time Understood. and that contact to a specific area yep. where you're actually sitting. Right. Um, and we clean those spaces because we do need to continue to operate, like Carolyn said. Agreed. And we try to do this in a safe manner. It's just as things tick up, 
Dick and I have been concerned because our employees are concerned. Oh, sure, sure, of course. Yeah. Okay, so you also, we have the cubicles that were used for the foot clinic. Mm -hmm. We have the backpack sprayer for disinfectant. Yeah. And if somebody needed to come in to review documents and stuff, they could sit in one of those cubicles. We could just disinfect it with the backpack sprayer because it would only be one person. Yep. And I think that would be taking the one exception. Yep. Yep. So these are the sensible things we're trying to come up with. And, and it's funny, Dick and I talk about this stuff almost every time it comes up <laughs> and coordinate with each other yep. so that we can do this. Thank you. I mean, we disinfect it with the backpack sprayer throughout the early voting every day yep. to protect employees. Dick, I hate to cut you off. We're going to have to get it. Dick, I hate to cut you off because I don't want to run out of time. Is there oh, anything? we're right ahead. No, is there anything yeah, else? That's my bedtime. Is, hey. there anything, is there anything else that you need to bring up? No, that's good. Thank you very much. All right, we'll vote that right now. Okay, Trevor so Nathan. motion to, um, to uh, not allow anyone in the building without a mask unless they show medical reason for in that case, we uh, isolate them, sanitize after. We try to make every effort to handle the business outside the building um, through email or passing it outside the building to protect our employees. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfen. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Um, I, I'm. Uh, Excuse me. Yep. Yes. So, am I supposed to change the plan to reflect that vote? Because no. that's in the reopening plan. No, I know. That's what I. That's why. Casey, we wanted. That's in the reopening plan. We wanted, we wanted to make plan. it separate. We wanted a separate vote. Now we're going to vote on the changes to the reopening plan, but we wanted this to be clearly a second. You know, a clear vote on that. Okay. For Dick's um, concerns. Okay. okay? So, um, did everyone have a chance to review all the changes? Yeah, it was really yeah. just the two, you it know, the self-certification, which yeah. I agree with, that makes sense. Um, and then the and then the limiting, you know, how many people are in here and trying to limit our meetings. The only, the only thing um, I would uh, think, just so that we don't have to keep revoting it, is any self-recertification um, on the on this stuff. You just are authorized to update, okay, Casey? Mm -hmm. Would that be all right? Okay, because I haven't asked the orders. I was about to ask that question. Yeah, no, the thing is, the, um, you know, the governor's changing stuff constantly as a result of a worsening situation. So the self-certification and all this other kind of stuff, you just we're authorizing you to update, okay, mm -hmm. based on yeah, the orders. As... Because a lot of this stuff happens even between our meetings. Correct. So, and, and you um, get the direction yeah. from the governor. So, okay, thank you. Jennifer would, has a question um, too. Make a motion for uh, adopting the reopening plan adjustments or amendments as uh, or changes that have been proposed, and authorize Casey to continue to make updates um, based on the situation. Uh, I'll second that for discussion. Jen, did you have a question or want to add anything to that? I just had a public comment. The hand was up, so I didn't know oh, if I wanted oh. to take that prior yeah. to. Yes, yeah, why no, not before the vote? Sure. Go ahead. It's part of the conversation. This is a pass. Pass, go ahead. Oh. Pass. Pat, you have to unmute. Pat, it might be helpful if, you, helpful if you hit star six. Maybe that would work. I had to do it on the console. Or you could Maybe type. Maybe stepped away. Yep. Or she could type a question. We could answer it after. Yeah, we can answer it. We'll try to answer it later. Um, if she wants to submit it in writing, just uh, let interrupt us. Okay. All those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. Okay, thank you. Um, Casey, did you want... Uh, Press star six to mute or unmute yourself. Press star nine to raise your hand. Okay, okay. so... Um, we, we talked about the schools. Was there anything else related to COVID that anyone wanted to talk about?
Oh, I just mentioned wear your mask. Yeah, That's well, all. we keep saying that. <laughs> broken, broken. broken. Okay, um, notice of proposed APR purchase of land. Um, I, I'm not aware of that. Can, um, can we just have to read day? this into the record. I have to find it now. Yeah, if you read it into the record, we actually have to have you review it and in a specific oh, hearing. Gotcha. Um, at the next meeting on December 2nd. Yeah. Sir, read, I, yep, oh, I can read it. Never mind, I found it. Uh, Dave gave it to me. Pursuant to General Laws, uh, Chapter 7C, Section, I'm not sure what, the Deerfield Select Board confirms receipt of a notice of acquisition of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts by and through the Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources under the Agricultural Preservation Restriction APR program for proposed purchase of farmland located in the town of Deerfield, identified as map 148, lot 7, in the assessor's records owned by Pamela M. Fisk, Arno Leonard uh, Skalski, and Sandra J. LaCoy, and will hold a public hearing on December 2nd, 2020, at 6 p.m. Uh, and, and then it goes into our um, remote uh, information. So it will be in, uh, it's read right into the record, and we'll have the public hearing in December. Okay. Sounds good. Um, next item on the agenda. Capital budget. Is capital budget. I always um, feel like this comes way too soon. I know. <laughs> we, we've got to start this, but. I know. Uh, is there, I know we were talking about sidewalks. Um, Kevin had given us proposals yes. for sidewalks. And, and tree and, work. Um, you know, Greg Franceschi brought up the whole thing about sidewalks, and as did Martin Michael Martin. Mark, uh, Michael Martin. We we need to do sidewalks and invest in sidewalks. Yes, we do. Um, I I am torn between asphalt and concrete. I'd rather have the concrete. But, I, I think um, we need I'm, a mixture. I, I think in downtown concrete, yeah, asphalt I, everywhere else. I haven't been able to ascertain whether, you know. Is the extra money give you extra life? I mean, is you know from a we should have somebody come in and give us a, you know whoever gets an estimate come in and I know concrete stuff. lasts longer, but also costs more. Yeah, it's more attractive. I would love to make sure we have concrete around. Definitely downtown. Downtown. The problem with concrete is concrete is not flexible with frost. Correct. And that's why a lot of our sidewalks are in the shape they are is because underneath that blacktop is concrete padding. Yeah. And nice. and they're moving. In those in three sections, and you know, I mean, well, the I was is. also concerned, Dave, about the tree roots. Are tree roots going to be better with well, concrete or asphalt? Well, they have the permeable asphalt that they can be using. No, it doesn't have to be, you know, like Hatfield did, did uh, asphalt up and down there, I think, didn't they? Uh, or maybe it was concrete. Have, concrete. That was all concrete. That looks beautiful, let me I tell you. Know. But I think I just it, it think is beautiful. There's looking at the budget, um, you know, the estimates that came out, I could pull them up. But they, I just feel like from Conway Street North, Elm Street, little down, you know, say you went to the um, Polish Club, that kind of that section of town. I just feel like that section of town should be concrete and. Um, you know, and, and as I look at all the other towns, Great Barrington, Lennox, all these, all these places I go to, Pittsfield, they all have a really nice plan of concrete planters, you know, just, just really nice uh, paving areas with the nubs when you get down, all the ADA and the uh, compliance stuff. I just think we, we beautify the center of town. And then when you get to those long stretches, I mean, I just think it makes sense. We can get a lot more done. It'll look beautiful. And of course, you'd have asphalt, but when you got to a road, you would pick up concrete, like right at that section. So your, your you know, five, 10 foot section, and then it would go down to your ADA compliant ramp. I think you just do those sections in asphalt, and then you pick up, you pick, I mean, in concrete, and then you pick up asphalt for the long distances. Um, Casey, could you, you have um, Kevin submit the uh, sidewalk then for a uh, combination? Do you want Trevor just to repeat it? I, I can work with I can work with Kevin on putting that together and, and then bring it before the okay board one more that time. Combination? Well, yeah, it's you know the only thing. That's the combination yeah. he did in Waitley. Yeah. Wait, remember Trevor? They yep. just did the Waitley. They did. So, so there's areas of Waitley and 
the center of town that are actually asphalt, but also areas that were concrete. Correct. Um, and I sent Brian down email to see if he could talk to me about it yep. because that was, I think, a grant. And I think that they was, did. Yeah, and I think it was um, the same. One thing that I would it. caution everybody about is ADA compliance. The downtown has some ADA compliance issues. Yeah, absolutely. That if we're going to do those, we should consider it. Well, that's in However, well, we gotta, I did give you the capital projects that were approved, so be careful. We don't. We may not have a lot of money. No, of course. My like, caution as an administrator. Even if we put this on and we get a partial part, like I'm not really interested in doing downtown until we figure out that common and the Elm Street stuff, because you don't want to go and do beautiful sidewalks and mark them all up again. So I think what we know we could do is North Main. And if you we're going to do the park, we need to we do need something to do by the park there, and yeah. in front of there. So that, those are areas that we could focus on and get done at least. Talk with DOT about what the plan is I'm for just Sugar say, Oak Street. Casey, we, we have to follow up on DOT because I'd like another the, meeting. They got the money in the transportation bond bill to do the infrastructure on South on Sugarloaf. Yeah. So we need to make sure that is still moving ahead so that we can get that street. You know, we can take over the streets. Greg, Greg um, Franceschi and I were gonna. I would. He was. We were talking in our meeting about getting back in front of DOT and how we all had that meeting one time. Yeah. I'd love to have that meeting start again yeah. and you know just follow up with them and say, okay, here we are a year and a half later. We, where we are you at? Money, we, no, we got the money. And we and we advocated yeah. for you to get to Bonville. So look, let's get the plan together. Here's we already have a design team for the for the common. How do we tie all that stuff in together? Right. Can we use your maps? That kind of stuff. So I want to get that meeting together really quickly. Okay. We did it, I think, in November last time. If, if they're open to that again, maybe Casey, we could we could reach out to District Two and, and get that going. Um, and you know, do you I remember who you talked to? Yes, I'm sure I've got all that stuff. I'll pull my John, books out. John has yeah, John did. It. And Kevin has that stuff because it was a really good meeting. It was great. John was there. Kevin was there. Yeah, we had we had a really good meeting. So um, let's get that on the on the schedule again, and I'll you know I'll make time to go go down and do that again. Uh, but but then you know again, but, but I think from Conway Street down we get started. Let's look at you know is it going to be a sea of asphalt or are we going to break that up between? We're supposed, yeah, we're still need to break it. Up. I think it's just you know it, it's a landing strip there and, the, and it's easy to plow. I get that and there are concerns and expense about when you break that up. But there could be some some greening there to kind of alleviate all that asphalt. Um, you know, so I just think it's something that we need to look at. We have a, a rough budget, and we could do some of it. I think we should get, you know, stuff that we aren't going to get changed. We, we need to get, get started on it. Yeah. So let's just let's do it. Yeah. So I'll, yeah, because we'll get a list. Um, of it. But yeah. can I make a comment? Yeah. Can I make a comment? Yes. yes. I think one thing that needs to be helped, Kevin has brought this up to me three or four times, is we need to figure out the responsibility for maintaining the snow removal on these sidewalks. Yes. He's asked you to do it, actually either yep. do a bylaw or do a policy. Correct. And I think the recommendation was a bylaw would be more stringent yep. because it takes resources away from his ability to actually get the snow off the street, no, which is the first critical piece of dealing with it. It's exactly with, right. With his maintenance. Every other town that I, you know. So that, before we get too deep into it, we need to keep that in our radar screen. Well, let's let's well, get let's that going. Get a law, let's get a bylaw um, proposed for town meeting in yep. um, April. Okay. Well, I agree, and I think every other town I've been in, you know, you you have that's a sidewalk, normal. you you that's shovel normal. it. You know, yeah. it's common everywhere. So. So yeah, if we could work on that for April town meeting, okay. And then Dave, you had you. Were, well, it's just <clears throat> you know I know money's an issue, but you know if I had my brothers. In the center of town, I'd be putting in brick or cobblestone. Mm, that'd be pretty. Yeah, that would be beautiful. And especially coming beautiful. from the Leary lot to the areas, yeah. uh, the long range plan in my mind, anyways, of having that as the parking and then taking some of the parking off of Elm Street and maybe right uh, Main Street, and but having cobblestone or brick going to those areas and enhancing it. Yeah, um, you know, we but that's talk with you know that's something that, that we could work with maybe with the local businesses and stuff. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. 
Do you hear that, Casey? Um, I think it's a good idea. We sort of have to frame that out. But yep, I yeah. think um, Jennifer Remillard has a question. Okay. Okay, Jennifer. Jen's going to promote her. Go ahead. Hi, I just have a question. Um, since you're talking about sidewalks, where I live on the other side of Conway um, to Route 5 going to Elm Street, there's no sidewalk there. And yep. I didn't know if that would be something that we would request through the town to get something done there, um, or would that be the state because it is by the test? Um, um, I'm just hearing you talk about it. And they if are there's no state the way for us to go that way, um, you know, like if we wanted to go walk in the center of town, the we have Jennifer, to go all the way around moving. Um, Jennifer, the, uh, state, yes? the, Jennifer, the state is putting in sidewalks um, within this year, I think. Yeah, the new design in the spring, the, uh, they're fixing all five and ten and putting in sidewalks all the way yeah, down through the way back. Oh, oh, great. Yeah, it's yep. going sidewalks right up. Okay. Right up to the fire station, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah this is to the, the fire, fire station. station. Up to the fire station. Okay, well, thank you for, for letting me know, because I heard you talking about a sidewalk system. Yeah. That's like a huge need, definitely. It is. Sure is. So, thank you. Yep. Yes, no, and uh, we need to figure out how we're going to connect with that, and that's one of the reasons we're trying to think of uh, bylaw as well. So looking at the, uh, just, just looking, I mean, I need my glasses here, but looking at the, at the capital plan for FY20, um, yes. we look at, are we looking at FY20? Yes. Well, I just want to make sure the sidewalks get on. Because we're looking at FY22, correct? Yes. So, yes, FY22. Right. So, so FY22 anticipated. Now keep in mind a couple of things. We're actually funded at this past special town meeting. Right. So but there are quite a few things can I, on there. Can I go down that list and uh, just talk about them real quick? I know we got a boogie, but I'll do. I'll just do these fast because they're on the list. Um, I'm, I'm a little nervous of time, Trevor. But I know. I'll go, go fast. Town office file server. I don't know if that's still needed. Um, the uh, town hall roof. Um, because I know that we did the police roof. We've got some work to do on the town hall roof. Building inspections, a lot electronic archiving, which was some money over the next few that years. That's definitely a need. That's a need. Um, so then we've got yeah. under public works, um, we have obviously the wastewater upgrades, which is $5,724,000. I'll just skip right over that. Um, <laughs> so the, um, the culvert replacement project number one, I guess that's uh, MVP will reimburse 400 of the 500,000. Um, so we have a hundred thousand in here each year. I don't know if we have a program. Uh, I don't know if we have a we culvert have, zero I'm in you yet. Follow, when you go up to the Furcock tomorrow, I was going to have you follow up on our culvert. They're supposed to be. They haven't done the finished yes. inventory. Yes, inventory. Just, okay. They're, they're six months or eight months behind. Yep. Trevor. And then we have the LED street lighting, which I think was a that was one hundred fifty, but I think we have a grant through. Um, we got Green a grant communities for that, grant yes. on that. I mean, I know the money's still there. We, we do. probably have to spend it and then get reimbursed. But um, so that's really good. Um, now, so under DPW, there is uh, there is a trackless boom mower, and then um, there is a 2002 John Deere. The loader is 180 thousand. That that was on the their schedule. Um, I think it's. In need yeah, of changing. And we want to leave it there. Yep. So we're that's that's a big big ticket item this year. Um, the F one hundred and fifty pickup truck, which uh, was delayed, but that was paid for, right? We, did that. we did that at town meeting, so that's yeah, all set. We just, we just approved that. Yep. Yeah. And then we have the last uh, payment for our uh, roadside mower, which we get reimbursed for anyways. Um, we have the purchase of the Oxford land from uh, bakery, which that was done as well. Um, so. The next item, uh, we had senior housing. We had 150,000 in there, and that was uh, some seed money to kind of figure out what we're doing for senior housing. Um, but so we'll have to question what we're doing with that, um, and does it stay? And then we had uh, 50,000 for uh, the senior center feasibility study, and we talked about that the last couple of meetings about figuring out what what we want to do um, and what our needs are for our seniors. 
we do have some money left over in the church because uh, we had some money set aside for that where we did the building stuff. Um, I'll, I'll go through this quick, Caroline. I know you want to get oh, going. No, no, no. I'm Complete... just getting nervous. You yep. know, we're supposed to be out of here. We, 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 I'm quick. Yep. Uh, so we uh, Complete Streets Program. Uh, the Complete Streets Program, we have money set aside to kind of continue on that work. Um, the Town Common Design and Improvements. So we have 20000 um, we have 55000 in there right now for that. Am I, wait a minute, let me just run this across. That yeah. would, so that would be the next increment of funds right. for the it, town common design and design. Yeah, and so we have enough money in design right now. I just don't know how much, I, I won't know how much we're going to need for money at that point if we're going to start oh. anything. So we have to gonna, think about what you know that's going to be. Cycle is on that, uh, I don't, okay. I don't. So I got to do a little work on that. Um, then the police department uh, for FY23. We bought this, and we have the MDTs approved at special town meeting. The mobile, mobile um, data. The migration, yep. I think, is still necessary. Yep, the migration, which is 23. And then we have, you know, this is where the, the library has $8 million on it because we we're expecting to hear from them on, you know. I don't, I don't know what this. So we'll have to find out where that's at or what, what there are for grants and, and that kind of thing. But that, that's a big, big ticket item, obviously. I haven't heard if that's pulled up or And the, the rest are what we're doing for the Deerfield Elementary School. We did have a meeting the other night about different uh, items, capital items that they're going to put forward um, for needs. And, and again, every year we're trying to do the floors over and some bathroom renovations. Um, we really need to start working on the courtyard and uh, pave there. It's really a mess. And there's, huge cracks and water issues there. So we'll also look at, you know, MVP for that um, and replace backboards and, and um, air conditioning and that kind of stuff. Chromebooks, we already got approved by the CARES grant. And then we have always, you know, we have money, capital stabilization if available, 250,000. So there's $15 million listed there. Um, you know, 8 million is for the library, five, almost 6 million is for the sewer. You know, sewer. We already have a grant. We're we're going through that kind of stuff, and we're you know we've, we're funding that. But um, the large one is the is the library, and we'll have to find out where where we're going on that. And and really, the big ticket this year is the is the loader for DPW, which is needed. So that all those items will come there before the capital planning. I expect to see as well. What's that? You know, I expect to see permitting software. Uh, there's a couple of projects I expect to see. Yep. Permitting software. I think we need to consider, and I don't know what the cost would be, but I'm expecting it to be at least $12,000. Um, I think we need to consider shifting um, from the current website platform we have to another one. Yeah. Oh, God. Civic yes. Plus does offer a more flexible platform. It's just I can't get a quote from them because we have to refine the, the repository that the website has become. Right yeah. now, we have so many documents, they can't give us a quote to do a transition. Okay. So that's a good idea. We'll look so, at that, too. And that too. requires some planning. So that's yep. more of a capital project that I plan to submit. Mm -hmm. um, so those are a couple of things. Yep. I know Kevin does need, does intend to um, continue with his capital replacement plan. Yep. Um, I haven't heard from John. So there are some outliers, but yep. I would caution the board. Like I'm cautioning everybody, we don't know what revenues are going to look like, so we may yep. end up having to put things off, which I know nobody wants to do because you, you spend a lot of time and effort putting these plans together. Yep. On the other hand, nobody realized what COVID would do. Right. Well, well, we'll just get them on the board, and if we have to move them, we move them, but at least they're uh, there. You know, this is just no different than we were conservative in the spring and decided not to do it, put yep. it off to the fall. Our revenue situation was it was good, okay. and uh, you know the same thing. Maybe we'll, the same. we'll have some assistance from the federal government in the you know uh, before the fiscal year, and that will change how we're you know going to handle things. If in fact we get no help, then um, maybe it gets bumped up you know for another you know another year. Yeah, but okay. If, if we need to plan what we need to do, and and then we'll just have to adjust. There's nothing yep. you can do about that. Yep. Okay. Right so, yep. Carolyn, I, I'm reading the question and answer, and Julie Shelfont just asked the question. Okay. Are any of the items from the building assessment report 
going to be, and it just left, I don't know where it went, um, going to be added to the list. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh no. So Julie's question is apropos, however, um, I think based on an email, Julie, um, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but based on the email about public information on those assessment reports, which are online, um, I, I, I wonder if it's if it's a longer term planning exercise, and I think this, the board's going to talk about this in a few minutes, um, figuring out a, a schedule to do those, to handle the assessments um, or the recommendations of the assessment. Um, Julie, this is Carolyn. Um, we, we haven't been able to really um, investigate uh, the report on the senior center enough to know, I mean, obviously, if the roof is leaking, we should be doing something about the roof. Um, but uh, I don't have an estimate. I mean, there's not, we don't have anything concrete at the moment because we, obviously we haven't really gotten a quote. Just, just an idea of what the estimate would be. So my, my intention would be on similar things, when we get more information, we, I think what we do is we, give the capital committee an idea of what we would do it would be to you know fix the roof and say that we don't have an estimate at this time we don't know for sure if we need to do it in 2022 um, but if if this roof if the re roof needs repair this is like the first thing you would do yeah, is, I mean, why would you put any um, money into the building if if the roof leaks so um, I would say that this would be a heads up to the, um, I'm on the capital improvement committee. I sit on it as a select board member. So what I would do is say, it's coming. We don't have the, an, an estimate, but if this is truly what the condition of the roof, it needs to be repaired, then this we intend to do that in fiscal 22. And, and you know. And if there's a figure in there, well, we'll, and we'll just stick put something it in, in there. Rough figure. But to me, that has to be the number one priority. And um, we haven't gotten to that part of the um, meeting yet to talk about it, but I would be av absolutely advocating that we have to do, if we're gonna keep, you know, at some point we will make the decision to keep the building, then we need to do the roof immediately so it doesn't deteriorate anymore. Um, I, that seems to be logical. Yeah. Yeah, but so we haven't really about. discussed it yet because I, I don't think we we haven't figured out what we're going to do. <laughs> I mean, basically. That's why I always feel like this calendar with the capital stuff yeah. is just never right. Yeah. It's always like in before December 1st, when we, before we even get started thinking about what we're doing for a budget or what our needs are. I know. It's, it's really, the calendar just doesn't work for capital although, projects. Although the capital committee has been really good. They've been great. They've been great. Understanding that you have emergencies, you have priorities change yep. in the course of the year, and you have you know things that you didn't know about in December that will show up. They have been very on, good about so. it. I just, I know, yeah. I'm always like, once you start thinking about budget, what you want to do is yeah. like it's too late to put anything in. I know, but so. I, I I have to say if we if we want to take a minute to jump down since we are talking about yeah. the capital, we could go to this. Especially if you're on the um, phone, Julie. Yeah, and I'm um, done with capital. I, yeah. Um, you Jennifer, can you can you unmute Julie or let her participate? Um. So Julie. We, oh, oh, hi okay, Julie. Thank you. Um. So <coughs> we went through or started to look at this but we haven't discussed it is there anything um i mean what as as part of the committee or as chair of the committee is there anything um how, or how would you want us to approach this i guess is the best way to say this it's the senior center or the all five reports yeah great great question right yeah i know <laughs> after i said that i was thinking, oh I don't, you know, this well, is so what we talked about the other night at the meeting was drawing up a sort of executive summary of all five reports to give you guys, um, to give you a, a, something fairly easy to read instead of 550 page reports to read. Um, 
the reports do are parceled out into immediate actions that need to be done they recommend in the next 11 months and then one to five years 10 years 20 years and that's pretty easy to summarize there are not very many items on there that are the zero to 11 month range one of them is the roof of the senior center building that you just mentioned there's a couple others on there and I can't tell you off the top of my head right now but I can send you all a summary list of what those urgent items are that they recommend we've also reached out to them to have a meeting with them to get a you know back and forth dialogue about the recommendations they need yep that's great okay I think that that makes sense I'm really curious to kind of sit in on those meetings and see what you know see what the experts talked about because I mean when I was at the meeting the other night I didn't know should we is that building too far gone does it come down do we fix it like what's the plan with the building and so it does it does say that and I think Julie had mentioned that and that was a surprise to me I didn't really know you know with reading like oh this is in poor condition this is in poor condition but but they said that you you can save it so and and I'm not so sure I don't know two something million dollar figures is enough but yeah but but it depends on what's in there right so I mean that was just a you know again it's it's a back of the envelope I think look at what what it would take to do that but and probably more in depth than that but um so I'm, I'm excited that, that that's a possibility. And, and yes, I think if any time you, you have a leaking roof, I think it just, it's so fast your building gets destroyed. So it does make sense to kind of look at that thing first and say, okay, so it does say we wanna save it. We all kind of start to agree on that. Let's figure out, what, do we do a slate roof back on? Or I think you had a recommendation and maybe, I've seen in the, as I'm in the building industry, I get to see a lot out there. There's some really nice, um, I'll call them a faux slate roof, but a really durable 50 year kind of, you know, material that can go on that, that would still look architecturally appealing and, but, but last a very long time and maybe a whole lot less money than slate. Um, um, so I, I just want to say though, slate, a slate roof can be a hundred year roof. That's true. I mean, so yes, so, you weigh the two for I, sure. I, I just wanted to put in repair of, mm -hmm. of senior center roof as, you know, if if we're going to go forward with this, then we need to, you know, that should be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just well, to the get the roof of my house is 140 years old. Is that right? My, my mine right. is over 150. Wow. So I mean, so maybe it's worth yeah. spending the money and doing one again. But so it really depends on what the whole envelope looks like and what our what our total total budgets are. And yeah. So it'll be interesting to have those meetings and earmark something for that. Um, so anyway, Julie, what didn't you want to have a public information session to discuss some of this? We do. Yep. Yeah. And well, I think that's a good place to bring all those questions. Yeah. Um, yep. Julie, Julie, would you? I also think that. Go ahead. Um, well, I was wondering, from a time frame point of view, do you think would you be ready December second? Is that too early? That's kind of. I, I know that's only like, it's like um, a week and a half away. I don't know. Seems no, early. two weeks away. Uh, yeah, but you got that would be tight. So yeah. what we want to do is um, have the architects, GRLA, come and give us public information session on the reports that they made. Yep. Um, before we have, here is our intent. We would like to have a meeting with them as the building committee, which is, of course, mm -hmm. open to everybody. Um, then after that meeting, have a public information session that would be on a Saturday morning. Oh, um, okay. that would be again virtual. And yeah. then we want a second public information session. They can be in either order, but the um, Tim Mercilati, who's the professor who worked with us on the survey that we did last mm -hmm. September a year ago, um, has. Uh, can do a public information session on that as well. There right. are two public information sessions, one on the survey, one on the, re the building assessment reports. Um, I, I, I think I want to go through those before we make any decisions because you want the space to match the program needs. So before we decide to, right. before we decide to invest some the money. Um, although, again, mm -hmm. we want to put in the budget 
that we're going to repair the roof or put money away for the roof so that we're saving the building as much as possible while we're going through, you know, the rest of the process, I guess. So my thought was that you don't, I mean, you don't necessarily have to use that building for a senior center. Right. You could decide at some point to use it for something else. What you need to decide now, I think, is whether or not you want to save the building. Yes. If you want to use it for something yes. someday, then we need to repair the roof. Yep. And we need to do that fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I am also of the opinion that it would be a good project for CPA funding under a historic, um, whatever you, the word Preservation. is, um, yep. historic preservation or something. Preservation. Um, preservation. Preservation. Yeah, refurbishment. Yeah. For. Okay. Um, uh, it's a good candidate for it. It would require getting the historic commission to declare that it's a historic building, which I don't think is um, a particularly high hurdle to get over for this building. Right. No, it has to just be over 50 years old. Mm -hmm. Great. So yes. that sounds like the <laughs> it's well over that. Yes. And it was, you know, it has um, historic significance for the town because it's been yeah. the ground school and all that. Yeah. So, so I think um, just I guess mm -hmm. go I, I love that that idea and that plan and doing that thing and then it seems like we will probably be past December second by the time we have a book. I mean we can just stick a round number out of that book in there for the roof just to say, hey, this is coming and we'll refine it over the winter. Casey, I think that would I think that's what we're gonna do. We'll just pull the numbers out of the report and then and we'll maybe add to, a little to it or something just we're, to we're gonna have to us. add to it. I don't I'm not confident in those numbers either. I think they're a bit low but yeah, we'll, we'll figure out what they say. I think prevailing wage is going to drive that. Yeah. I, I can tell you right now, I would add three times to it because of prevailing wage and cost for materials right now. Yeah, materials. If you're planning on doing it, numbers will change. Mm -hmm. Well, pull the cost for materials is significant right now. I know. It's double and I triple. But we don't and know. Trevor can back that one up. Yeah. Yep. So, that's why I'm not really confident in those numbers, but just pull those numbers out and say double them. Just to have some, just that ballpark, put them in, and we'll, we'll refine it. But. Just to put them in the capital application, okay, Casey? Okay. All right. Great, and I look forward to those public sessions okay. and getting people's input, and there's a lot, a lot of good fun work ahead to, to get moving on that, and I think I'll stay Do here. You guys? Go ahead. Do you have an opinion on whether we should try to squeeze both of those in before Christmas or um, go for the new year for having both sessions? I, I think I, I think we should go for the new year. Only because... Um, I was kind of leaning that way too. The yeah. only pu the push was to get uh, better numbers and, and to find out, um, you know, the way the match was with programs and, you know, use. Yeah. W I'll make a decision, but I think if we we can always withdraw yeah. our capital or move request, it, change it. Yeah. At, you know, so if Casey gets something in there, we can adjust it or we can withdraw it. And I'd rather have a more thoughtful process um, mm -hmm. rather than rush it. Um, yeah. The only reason I was thinking of December second is because you know the, I know the capital committee wasn't going to meet, and the deadline is December first. Yeah. And so I'm already saying, well, this is our best guesstimate, and mm -hmm. you know, let them yell at me. Yeah, just to protect the roof, really. I yeah. mean, that's like the goal of we're going to save the building. Me let's and just... mad. and, and we'll, I'd rather have the thoughtful process than mm -hmm. and and, pe and they have been more. Um, the committee has been more understanding of um, cool. you know how how hard it is to comply to the December first deadline. Yeah. I mean, we're trying very hard. Yeah. But you know, a lot of our, our town business is not, you know, December 1st. It's, Doesn't it's fit the schedule. Difficult. So but if I wanted, we put some numbers in, then, then we can adjust them. And I just wanted to mention um, that, and thank you for all the work that you've done, Julie, I mean, and, you, and your board. Um, you've done a lot of work here and I'm really grateful for it. And I, I think I, you're I really probably happy. looking for help, too. Uh, is there, um, I thought I heard that there might be some need for some other minds on that on that committee, is that is that correct? I mean, we did lose, um, you know, unfortunately, 
Um, we lost Bruce Hunter. We lost Bruce, which is very sad. Which yeah. is very sad. He and was, he has a great experience. He I know. He was a perfect guy. Uh, he was. Um, he was. He had, um, yeah, a ton of experience and just a really great guy. So uh, we are looking for, I think, people to help out um, on that board, I think. So just make that plug if anyone's interested in serving on that board. Um, there's a lot of good stuff going on. So. Did you want to say anything on that? Yeah, they, oh, Julie, can I ask a quick question? Oh, We're talking sorry. about January, right? Yes. Jennifer and I are just trying to figure out, you know, putting this into some sort of a framework for planning purposes. So if you could just, and I know you would ask us to assist with that. It's just, I want to make sure that we, I'm on the same page before I get off the call tonight. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I take these notes. <laughs> Yes, so I asked George, I've asked both, um, GRLA and um, Western New England to come back with some suggested dates, um, and I haven't heard anything from GRLA yet, I think they're still working on coming up with dates. Uh, okay. He's been pretty responsive every other time we've asked him a question, so I'm mm -hmm. curious he's just working on it. Um, and then um, Tim Bersuati suggested sometime after the new year, but he yeah. says he's pretty open, so pretty much any Saturday morning works for him Great. at the moment. Okay, thank you. Well, if we're of the opinion that we're going to save that building, I think we should get that leak fixed right now and not wait. At least just to plug the hole, you mean, at the moment? Just plug the hole. Yeah, just I don't stop know it from leaking. Or, yeah, have somebody look, you know, look, look at it quick. And, you know, because the longer it goes, the worse it's going to get. Especially through the winter, it's bad. Yeah, and it's just. Be bad. So. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to hear where you know where it's leaking and what what what's going on up there. Yeah. Maybe we can get. A I don't know where it's leaking or anything. It's, I know it's up. Maybe maybe um Casey maybe you uh, could get Kevin to see if um. He can get a coat of some sort, have some roofer look at that. Yeah, if it's a Hawkins is temporary. probably the best slate people around. What's that? Mahan? Hawkins. Oh. Hawkins, okay. And uh, Mahan is another one. Because oh. slate is very unique. It is, now. yeah. Not everybody knows how to do that. No. And yeah. it's just. Yeah, okay. Well, but it should good. be repaired and we should do it as quick as we can. Yeah. Well, we could get a transfer from that. I'm sure, yeah, just to get it, just to get a whole fix. Yeah, as moment. long as we concur that we want to save the building. If right. We're not going to save the building. It's, yeah, it's not worth it. sense so. throwing money away, but yeah. I, it know. sounds like we, it sounds uh, from the report that, from just and the public. Just the report and what Julie had said. Yeah. It, it seems like it makes sense. And even if you double the, the square footage there to build would be much more expensive. Oh, than sure. Even in doubling the repairs. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we can look at where we'd add on to that and get right. more level space to the Well, again, and, this is part of the big yeah, vision. Yeah, the big plan. We're yep. going to have a parking lot. Where are you going to put the parking lot? What are you going to do with the church? Some the church property? You know, how do you connect? We need a, a yeah, big Yeah, a larger this plan. This is what, you know, we kept talking about. Need a few Yep, yep, yeah. to see what's we need needed. Need a building. Yep, yeah, and that's, in, that's on the capital. That's, that's on the capital. That's on the capital. It is budget. on the yep. capital budget, right. Okay. The idea was to do uh, over there. How to connect. How do, how do we do the connectivity of all these different properties and uses and stuff? Okay. Um, Julie, is there, just for um, people that are listening, is there, can you just highlight a couple of the items that you went over on Monday? It was really a good meeting, and I was very impressed, and I would like you just to share with everybody so it's part of our record tonight. Oh goodness, from memory. Um, <laughs> as far as like the wide ranging discussion that we had or the, well, I'll give you an update and you can tell yeah. it up if you want. Mm -hmm. So where the building, town building advisory committee is right now, we've conducted this survey of Deerfield residents to get opinions on services and space needs and buildings. And we have contracted with um, GRLA, which is an architectural firm that does this type of thing all over the state. Um, they have a team of people, architects, engineers, um, space 
planners, that kind of thing, and they um, do building assessments. So they have come back and given us the first draft of reports on, uh, five reports on town-owned buildings. So what is left for the, um, our initial, initial charter for the Town Building Advisory Committee to do is to parse all of this, read all of these reports, take it all in. We're going to meet, as I said, with GRLA as a committee. We're going to have a public information session from GRLA. We're going to have a public information session on the survey. And then we're going to deliberate as a committee and come up with recommendations for um, for the town to move forward on these buildings, obviously in conjunction with this group and everybody else who speaks up. Um, we then had a long discussion with all sorts of things. Um, it was very interesting and very informative. There were no decisions made. It was just sort of a background discussion. The things I can think of off the top of my head that we talked about were the possibility of some sort of small um, senior housing development, um, refurbishing the building that the senior center is in right now, which is one recommendation from GRLA. Um, the possibility of doing that using CPA funds, since it is a historic building. Um, oh gosh, what else did we talk about? We talked some about the church. Um, the church building, the GRLA architects were recommended not um, refurbishing the church building. Um, I, I'm a little hesitant to give a final report on all this stuff because it hasn't been deliberated on by the committee. These were just um, some some comments that have come up. Um, My, um, I don't know, what else? Well, it's, it's just that it was a very good discussion, mm -hmm. but um, I think it, it, was. Because it, it requires so much investment to we have um, the senior center, and there was real question on the church that it made sense to get, in my mind, to get a second opinion from someone else just to review what has been done, just to make sure that we're making the correct decision going forward. That that was really well, how I kind of felt. And the way I kind of saw it was that you know we were talking about that other gentleman who did the assessment of our senior, you know through the Buildings Advisory Committee, did a presentation at the elementary school a year and a half ago or so. And um, I was interested in, in, you know, employing him to come and have a look at what our overall master kind of ideas are here about, you know, we have this library expansion happening, we need, you know, this building we'd like to save, the church seems to be a little far gone, do you concur? And if we take that down, what would we do in its space? Is it senior? Uh, is it an addition to the senior house, uh, senior center slash a new town hall? Is it a uh, se senior housing? Is it you know what do we do with the steeple? That you know how do, what do we plan on doing with this building in the next thirty years or twenty years or like so? There's I think because this is so contiguous, it needs to be thought out in a master plan of really what we're going to do. I do think it makes sense if, if everybody feels like that building is saveable. It's a beautiful old building and if we could make it nice, um, whether it serves as a senior center is a totally different question, but um, it could serve as something and we could use all the floors and get an elevator and maybe put an addition on or, or just take the church down and put something else there or well, save part of the church and not part of the other right. church. And, or, you know, so there's bigger do questions. Move, do we move town hall over there once right. we can rehab? And yeah. We, Make this the senior center for this is all yes. for already. Exactly. But you know, I Those mean it was just, questions. We we need we need some guidance. I think so too. Uh, to look at our assets and, and I, I truly feel that we have to have a big vision so we, we do this off connectivity and, and you know, where do we put parking lots instead of having just pavement randomly everywhere. Right. Let's have really attractive yeah, parking that's good is plan. useful around these buildings and stuff like that so anyway so i would like yeah i i, I think i, think I feel a lot, like it's a lot moving. more discussion to happen yeah and i feel like it's moving in the right direction with all Absolutely. the work that this this committee has done for us and um and then we we, we build on that and we you know i like the idea of the town hall right. there senior center here you know what, what would it take to make that happen here is this the right building for it what would this building i think mean, because i think they assess this building as well right 
Yeah. So the town hall, right, yeah. Julie? Yeah. So they did. Yeah, so we can get an idea of what they're thinking yep. there too. So there's a lot of reading. I, as you said, I think everything's 150 pages or something. So, and there's five reports. Yeah. A lot of it's pictures though. So oh, okay, good, good. I can do pictures. Uh, so yeah, I just need some time to, to, you know, over the holidays here just to kind of absorb I that I, I, and think. Yeah, I, I didn't want to rush you, Julie, but on the other hand, not people don't pay attention during the holidays and we get criticized because you know then they, they we're going moving forward with a process that how come you didn't tell me about it <laughs> you know all that kind of stuff so we'll never win that one um we're, yeah we'll never win there's that a one. lot of emotion to do with it there is too, that, that yeah. needs to be absolutely um, especially with the church uh, yeah. especially with the church people yeah. have been married there and, and yeah you know and, and yeah. baptized yeah. kids there and have you know buried their loved ones? You know, right. through services That's why there. I kind of wanted to go with the second opinion. Jennifer, yeah. is there someone that wanted to speak? Yeah, um, Lori has a chat, uh, a, a comment. She says many in town would like to see pros and cons of refurbishing the church in light of its place as a classic landmark in the center. Of town. Right. I, I think everyone, um, Lori, everyone feels very connected to the church, even if you had never gone there just because it is um, so um, New England. And if, if we ended up doing something with the building, tearing it down or rebuilding something there, we certainly would try to replace it, the look of a meeting house, and we would do everything we could to preserve um, the steeple and, and you know, the town clock and all that kind of stuff. Mm, so I just want people to know that we're very sensitive to that, mm -hmm. but we have to make, uh, really good decisions and, that, and I don't feel like we have enough information to make any decisions at the moment right I mean myself I right. mean I, I certainly want a second opinion I don't know what how Dave feels but well that was my church growing up so there yeah. you go yeah I right so, how many times I mean, were you in trouble there <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't think we're rushing to do anything at, at we want to keep the we want to keep forward motion and we Julie has done an awful lot of work in her committee, and mm -hmm. we want to keep moving on this and move quickly. Um, my, we, we needed to move on the senior center. The senior center is not going to be opening until we have a vaccine and it's safe because that building is not, doesn't have good ventilation, and we're entering the winter months when everything has to be sealed up. So, you know, I wanted to try to use the time to do something in that building, but I'm not, I'm not sure break. if that's going to mm -hmm. happen or not. So right. anyway, um, Moving thank on. you, Julie. Yeah, I'm thank sorry. you. We're, we're under the gun here because we have to get out of the building in about a half an hour or so. Um, or sooner, if possible. Yeah, well, we gotta, <laughs> we got to we gotta get out of here. <laughs> Casey has to be out of here, too. So, um, and she's always doing last-minute things. So um, we have to move on. Thank you so much. I Julie. dare the cops to pull me over. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he, he's on you. <laughs> I know, but I don't want the governor coming after us. You know, people will turn us in here. We're, All right. we're trying to be good. Um, so um, we we really should. One of the things that we were going to talk about um, is reconstituting the senior housing um, committee. And Lily Dwight, um, who was chair of the committee for years and years, and um, I participated in that committee as well, is willing to. Um, you know, we'll organize that again. So um, anybody that's interested in the senior housing committee, please let our office know, you know, you send it in on chat, send it into the office. Um, you know, it looks like- Carolyn, what was the charge? We don't have Do you remember one what the charge was? I remember when it was con when it was active. Yeah. But can it, Lily tell us what that charge was? Yeah, I'm sure Because she can. if we're gonna publish I would like people to know what it is right. the charge of the committee is, so it's not this generic concept. Well, we don't we have want senior housing. That way they can drill down. To the, yeah, know. we want senior housing in town. We've been working on the the Cherry Beat thing. Looks like you know three house is going to go through. So um, we, the town, will not be purchasing um, Cherry Beat, and we are you know we had a private partner and we did um, put some effort into that. Uh, concept um, but that I think that 
moving, we're moving on now. So we need to move on with trying to come up with something else. And um, we have, again, we have random pieces of property. We have, you know, potential over the years that have fallen through and we need to move on. So um, Lily is uh, going to offer to help on the committee and the mission of the committee, I think, is really just to, to make sure we have some subsidized senior housing uh, units built in Deerfield as quickly as possible. And, um, and I say subsidized, not market value. Subsidized, which means whatever your income is, you don't pay more than, um, what is it, 30% or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, we, we need a few units at least, because we have real need in town. Um, for not market-based housing, senior housing. Okay. So we'll regroup on that, right? We'll have yeah, more we'll time to. Uh, Lily, I'm sure Lily can dig out the paperwork on that. I, I don't know if she's on the call. But she is, and I think we can endorse kind of moving forward, yeah. but we'll get a charge yeah. and do all that before is we that, vote. Do we, do we need to vote that case in? Not yet, right? I, I, I would, I would no, probably. No, vote a senior committee that's what I mean I think I would wait until you had a charge in front of us and but okay. I, I would endorse moving forward and having we really kind of get everything going and then okay I mean, move in that direction but yeah I would vote after we uh, have a charge in front uh, of us. Casey could you put that on the December 2nd um, agenda I'm sure we can figure it out by December 2nd yeah um, the next item on the agenda is the formula-based bylaw um, does anyone have a chance to look at it I have a bit and I've talked a bit about it. I still have concerns on it. Um, um, do we get any feedback from um, yes. the council uh, other than, uh, also I thought it was a note that yeah, there was um, one some note question on Chatham. That Chatham did it, but the yeah. AG had some, you know, didn't think that the town had authority to regulate in the interior elements of a business. Um, I kind of tend to agree with that. Um, I, I still have, the, I understand the philosophy and why we kind of want to direct how we so so can bring we make the comments back to the um, planning board? When are they planning a, a when, hearing when on this? Casey, when does this come up to the planning board? December. December. Okay. Uh, so that's why I would like to talk to the planning board because I think it's pertinent to the discussion. Um, anything that's a, a change in a bylaw should go through town council mm -hmm. well before it makes it to a warrant. Right. So oh. this Jade review of it, the AG's comments are pertinent. Yeah. Um, and I think that needs to be part of the discussion because if they significantly were to change the language throughout the hearing process, um, they could very well end up at the beginning. Because you know, if there's significant language changes, you have to republish a hearing process. So I, just, I think it's worthwhile. I'm happy to pour work this on to John Waite and to the other committee members with the admonition that um, this came up to the select board and it's in fact something that should be reviewed by council. So well, um, we took that initiative. I might not phrase it quite that way. But. Well, could you, could you um, have them discuss the concerns of council? And, and consider well, that's what I would do. I would form it for purposes of the discussion of their hearing. Okay. Uh, and then that would be fine. So that's how it would frame it, John. Is that okay with you? Yeah, because I think it's a piece of crap. Oh. Well, okay. yeah, so we have his <laughs> opinion. <laughs> um, I, I think I think that needs to be discussed um, further yeah. to make sure um, that we're not. Uh, you know, going against council's advice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Nor are ignoring what the AG's office said. Right. 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 To chat them because it's essentially the same information. Yeah. Right. Um, but I think it's important that it, we continue to discuss it. Okay. Yep. Um, do we have a lease? Do we have a lease, um, landfill lease? Not yet, right? Not? Yes or no? We do not. Not yet. Okay. okay. We do not. We did. Uh, it's on next the next meeting too. <laughs> okay. All right. But what this is this is such a headache. What the heck is happening? They're work. I think they're working on it, right? Is, is this, are they, 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 we are working on it. Yeah. They're legitimately, they're coming to the table. 
I mean, this was our yes, concern last definitely. night. Yes, definitely. But okay. I think Lisa and I have, I have had uh, have had one conversation. We are planning to have another one. Um, so, do you also um, were looking for us to read in, uh, to discuss a little bit before the end of this meeting the um, the aggregation, electrical aggregation stuff in our mail packet. Were you going to bring? Do you want to talk so about? So, in email, can... we received an, we received information from Disney Aller. We need to publish that information. What yep. I wanted you to be able to do is review it. Yep. As part of the packet, I did, um, and notify people that this will be published not only in the newspaper, but we'll be posting it out on the yes bulletin board and on the website. So I'll give a little bit of public a, information. Yeah. I'll give oh, a little bit of an update. Lovely. So um, just from what I gathered from this, um, so as everybody knows, the town entered into an agreement with many other towns around us to kind of pool purchasing our um, electrical. Uh, generation um, we still have Eversource you know delivers our electricity but um, but we, we wanted to um, the communities wanted to go more of an, in a green um, try, try to do as much local green energy production as we could and um, generation as we could and with that we, we were um, worked with Dynergy to do um, to give people a choice so they have they can stay, they're automatically enrolled in this program. The pricing that we're getting, oh, can you not hear me? Trevor, you're muted. How am I muted? You can't hear me here? Did this shut up? Well, that's right, the Zoom is only until nine. I know, we're supposed to shut off. At nine? Can you hear me at all? How did we just go down? Oh. Yeah. It's to shut so I've been staying muted here. Can you hear me now? I mean, you probably can hear me through my. Oh, you can't. Can you hear me through my laptop? So um, I guess I'll do that. I don't know why our our phone went dead. The governor's making a shutdown. Yeah, maybe the governor's making a shutdown. I'll just do this quickly. If everybody can hear me online now, I'll just do that, um, and I'll speak loud for the three of us in the room. Um, so again, we entered into um, Franklin County ag um, aggregation for clean energy, and so um, Eversource does our uh, distribution. The generation we gave uh, our residents a choice; they are automatically enrolled in this program. Their choice is to leave the program. They just call up the phone number, and you can switch right back and pay a little bit more through Eversource, or you can stay in the program, which is a little bit cheaper. Um, you also have an opportunity to pay a little bit more if you want. And that opportunity is to get a lot more uh, green energy than what is in the basic program. So um, you're, you're more than welcome to do that and sign up. And if you want to make more of a difference in climate change and, and produce, you know, and, and, and um, encourage more uh, green energy production, local green energy production, you can, you can choose to get that plan, which is a little bit more than the um, than the rate you'd pay through Eversource, um, or you can stay with the less expensive of all of those choices, and which is the one that we've signed up for regionally to pull our money together and, and purchase green energy um, at a reduced cost. So that is a fixed cost, while the price for um, Eversource fluctuates over the next 36 months, this price is a solid standard price for the long term, the whole thing, and it tends to be less expensive all the way around. What this notification is saying is the price went up a little bit, and that's like, I think it went up 0 .00, like zero, uh, 0 .00102 per kilowatt hour. So um, just b between the time that we went into the program and then the time that um, they finally settled on, on a price, it went up slightly. It's still less expensive than, again, than Eversource. And Eversource finally came up with a winter rate so we were waiting on that, you know, kind of bated breath. Are they going to be more or less than us? They are more, more expensive than what we've signed up for. So I feel like we're in, in pretty good shape. So the whole idea here is that we've been notified. We also, um, uh, by regulation, we have to post this everywhere. So um, the Department of Energy understands that, you know, we've done that. So that, that's going to go in the newspaper. It'll go all around town. We'll put it on Facebook. We'll put it kind of everywhere so everybody can see that your rate that we've signed up for went up um, 
again, 0 0.00102 per kilowatt hour. Um, and that's it. So that's really it in a nutshell. So again, we signed up for green energy, a little bit less expensive than you're paying at Eversource. Um, you know, again, electricity, is, it's not a big difference, but it's, it's less. And, um, and it's, it's producing green energy for local, uh, for our local economy. So I think that was it on that. And all this will be on the website, so everybody can, can kind of see that. Casey, did you have any um, uh, updates that you wanted to discuss? She may not be able to hear oh. us now through, <laughs> through this. Can you ask her, to, can you say if there are any updates, Casey? Casey, any updates? <laughs> Put that mask on. <laughs> But you're muted. Casey, we can't hear you. You're muted. Wait oh, gosh. Second. You know what? Are we you're muted at all? Down. OK. No, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear us. Can, can, okay. can you hear Casey? Yeah. Oh, only through my laptop, not through anything oh, else. So that's why. yeah, right. I'll turn all it up. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Casey. But it looks like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like, you know, Pan Am is, is not responsive to us. And, and they've been horrible. They had an outbreak. And they would not even co cooperate because they said they were federal and they didn't have to um, on their repair yard. So, I mean, I'm not. I don't see the map. They, they always oh, say the voting trust that Pan Am could be part of um, based on a a change to operations and or a purchase. Yeah, but how does that uh, In other words, Norfolk Southern is concerned that CSX will be purchasing Pan Am and I, that could change some of their operational. Yeah, but I'm not sure how that affects us. I don't know that it does. Uh, the reason I put it in there is because we try to keep on top of the ownership of Pan yep. Am. Yep. So yeah. I just wanted you to be aware that okay. we the, That's good. The thing that I, I want to make sure, the only thing I'm really concerned about is that their pilot payments, they continue to pay their pilot payments. So The pilot payments expire. In fact, they expired this year. Right. So what are we going to do? I mean, you know, that's revenue to us. And they certainly require services, police protection, fire protection. We have calls over there on a regular basis. So what... Um, can, can you just ask Elisa or somebody what, yeah. what our options are to make sure that we continue pilot payments? I can ask. Um, I mean, that's, I mean. They want the board to not obstruct any change into that voting trust that isn't detrimental to Norfolk Southern. But I don't know what that would mean in terms of payments of taxes. I know. 
So can you find out what our I'll options send it, are? Yeah, I'll send it to Lisa. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure we can collect taxes off of them. You know, I mean, a payment. The and other, we'll, yeah. Uh, okay. The, the other. Well, I know that when we bought, when Pan Am bought it from Guilford, we had to make sure all the taxes were paid at that time. Right. As far as I know, because we're, behind. we were going to buy a lien at that time because yeah. they were behind. Maybe we should, um, Casey, can you just have Barbara check and make sure they're not behind? I think they were behind the, the last time I checked, but can you just check and see if they're behind at all right now? I will. And then um, uh, uh, find out from Lisa how we, um, if they are behind, that we do some kind of thing on the lien, because that's how we collected last time. David's correct. Okay. Um, Cherry yeah. sheets? Cherry sheets. Yeah, so it looks like um, they're staying with, you know, the original cherry, sh they're, they're level funding, it yes. looks like, right? That's what well, it looks like. Except for, oh, no, go ahead. well, except, except for uh, charter school reimbursements has, has, is up quite a bit to like 25,000, um, which is not a ton of money, but it is, we'll take every penny we can get on that. School choice though is down about 110,000. And we knew that was happening because we're not taking in as many school choice kids, especially um, you know, we made that decision early on that we were, you know, years ago, we were trying to limit the school of choice into the town, but just want people to understand what that means about $110,000 in revenue. The other big, uh, you know, drop in that is, is COVID, you know, pe people are not, you know, and if they don't enroll their kids in uh, preschool and, you know, kindergarten in charter, uh, in uh, school of choice, um, well, you know, will, will they, you know, or, or even just coming into uh, our own kids, coming into the school system, if they're not enrolled in, in here, will they will they stay on somewhere else? So um, there, there's um, schools but having I, some. But I want to make sure it's clear to people that the new school foundation formula has not kicked in. So Correct. we are doing extremely well because under the new formula we are supposed to be losing like $300,000. Out of our chapter 70, out correct. Out of our chapter 70. So yep. we did not lose this fiscal year, we did not lose 300, we were level funded, and it looks like they're talking about level funding us again. So we're actually making out like a bandit at the moment. We're getting this $300,000 that we were anticipating being cut, and we gotta straighten out the zip code stuff because we are, totally penalized mm -hmm. the new formula and at some point the new formula will kick in. Yep. So Casey, can you um, put that on as a priority project at some point when you have a minute or two or three or four or five? It's gonna it's gonna be on your tickler. Make Up sure, on your board. Make sure that that stays out front because that is truly money. Uh, um, impact on our tax, direct taxes to us. Okay, so please. All right, is there anything else that anyone wanted to talk about? Just yes. A motion. Yeah, the comment, okay. a comment in the, in the Q&A. Yes. Uh, Patricia T says, good, at, good evening, with all due respect, there were several letters submitted regarding the last CBA meeting. Will those be addressed? Thank you. Yes, I said that they were going to go, um, we are uh, forwarding them to the, our legal counsel. We have forwarded, we are forwarding, I haven't hit send yet. We okay. are forwarding them to legal counsel, yes. Yeah, a lot of them came in today, some of them were in yesterday, um, some were in a, a little bit earlier. We're just, we're forwarding them on to um, legal counsel because we're not entirely sure um, what our options are here. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Uh, yes. I'll second. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing on all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolf. Aye, Carolyn Ness. And thank you, Casey. You've got to be out of here by 9.30. Casey. Okay. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Wear Good your night. mask. And thank please you. have a wonderful Thanksgiving if we don't see you before and then. Please, Enjoy please, your please immediate safe. family. Just your immediate family. Yes, please be Say safe. Say hi, zoom to, zoom to the ones you'd normally visit with. But good night, everybody. Thank you very Thank much. You.